and welcome to the Daily Atheist Morning Show. Oh, whoa, I'm very quiet. Hold on a second. Let me come over here. Come here. Get up. Let me do it. Do it. Do it. Why is this so quiet? There we go. Good morning. Hello. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I am the amazing Super Chris. I'm just going to turn me up just a little bit more so I can be up there good. So we all sound good. Hi, guys. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Spooky bed hair. Good morning. Um, we've got uh, Stephen. Good morning, Stephen. Uh, nice to have you with us. Uh, something interesting is going on. Oh, KCA Randy is with us this morning. No more hiding for him. He must have got up at the crack of dawn or something. I don't know. But good morning, KCA Randy. Nice to have you. Uh, you know, my team and your team are the only teams that are, you know, undefeated. Uh, we'll see how your team. I will definitely be rooting against your team tonight. I'm just saying. Just saying. <laughs> Um, yes, Wes is with us here. I'd like to visit with you guys. I don't know if it's working exactly right now. We're, we're, we're checking to see how things are going to go. But um, I'm kind of uh, partnering up with uh, Skeptic Haven. It's a group of awesome folk who do stuff. If you're not familiar with them, I'm sure most of my viewers are, you know, because you guys just kind of go over. But, but yeah, we're actually uh, we're going to do the thing. I'm going to start helping them do things like, uh, you know, um, being a call screener and you know helping do you know thumbnails or whatever they need me to help do and we're gonna stream my stuff on their stuff and their stuff you know what we're gonna do i think we're gonna try to do uh to where i also host on their channel um shows and stuff like that neil neil the 604 atheist was actually talking to me about the possibility of getting on skeptic haven and doing a live call-in show where neil and i dealt with i think christians maybe i'm not really sure what his his evil plan of doom and despair was but you know how neil is lots of evil lots of planning lots of doom lots of despair good morning ember how are you doing nice to see you i've enjoyed watching your show off and on you know how i catch things as i go it's been nice to be catching up and seeing your stuff you've got a you've got an impressive little outfit going on there love that um and phil yes philip blister greetings phil you know um, I'd like to talk, if Philip, do you know, uh, are you familiar with Skeptic Haven and the group of people over there? Um, because uh, they also have some live streams that are the same kind of content. That if you're looking for more content for your Facebook channels or uh, groups that I'm sure Wes would love to have you spread the craziness over there as well. You know, just kind of a thought. Um, you like the thumbnail, Philosoph philosophical gamer thank you very much yeah, that's my halloween thumbnail i did that all by myself completely with you know no help whatsoever <laughs> yeah i went to some web page i was like make me pretty <laughs> but like a, a halloween version so yeah yeah that's kind of my halloween theme i had i had other stuff you know in the background oh yeah yeah oh sean good morning sean thank you for joining this morning you made it yeah you know it's good good to see you fellow heathens fellow burners as it were philosophical gamer 256 nice to have you enjoy having you there yeah fellow members of the damn nation i hope you all had a wonderful weekend you had to stay safe i had an interesting experience yesterday um if you guys are familiar if you're not familiar with it i like I, as i mentioned i'm kind of a teaming up with uh, Wes and those folks over at Skeptic Haven. And yesterday, I got to be a call screener for their uh, call-in talk show. And uh, so basically, if you were going to call in, you had to get through me first. I was like, uh-uh. <laughs> and I did it. I did it. I think only one person got through me the whole night. <laughs> they haven't quite explained the rules yet. But it's okay. It was fun. We had a good time. I got to watch... Um, <laughs> I got to watch Eric Murphy yank my chain because, you know, I, and it and it honors me enough to know that he knows that I am who I am and that I like what I like. And um, so we're sitting there going along and he started subtly bashing on Star Trek. And I'm like, what? I'm running the show. I'm, I mean, I'm not running the show, but I'm, I'm like, call. I, I, I got power to run the show. I could like bounce his ass. I got my finger over the bounce button. I'm like, you say one more bad thing about Star Trek. And I, he's over going, yeah. Chris is twitching. Chris's eyes twitching. My eye was twitching. He was right. It was fun though. It was a good show. I would never actually bounce somebody from somebody else's show. That would have been hilarious if I'd have done it. Bonk. <laughs> Talk bad about Star Trek. I got some for you. Just pop up in the show. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> yeah, I'd have gotten fired. They'd have fired me. Uh, yeah, awesome sauce. So good morning, everybody. Thank you all for joining me. So that's kind of the thing. I wanted to warn you guys that we are going to be doing that. Uh, it looks like it's going to be fun. I may be streaming over there now. Um, when I go over there and look, 
to me, in my eye, I see something else. I don't see me streaming when I go over there. Let me see. I may be. Nah, it just says notify me in one waiting when I go over there. Click on it, maybe? Nope, just says one waiting. But there I am over inside. Okay, that's cool. We'll see how it goes. We'll work. We'll work it out. We'll get it worked out. Uh, it, it, I enjoy building a network of of atheists who, uh, you know, we all kind of share the same uh, outlook to a degree. You know, my friends, I should say, you know, we're all trans positive and, you know, pretty much anti-Trump and all that stuff. So it's good to find another group to where I can spread my craziness. They'll let me, you know, if, if, if we can get it working and everybody's okay with it, that'd be great. Skeptic Haven gets a, you know, a live stream morning show and I'll chill out their stuff and we'll put their little... You know, and it works for me. It gets my craziness out there, and I get to talk at more people. <laughs> so, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward. Yeah, so Philip Lister, here's one of the things that's been very interesting, and I appreciate it. Philip Lister, he's got a lot of Facebook groups. I really, I've got one that's got, a, you know, like 2,000 people in it, I think, something like that. I'm not really sure off the top of my head. I don't know much of how, about how to use it. I don't know how to, certainly don't know how to monetize it or none of that business. I wish I did. So if anybody, you know, uh, but he's got like 29 groups, including three Arabic ones. Last Friday, if you were watching the show, now normally I'm sitting here, we watch the show and people always pop in. Usually they're Christians. They're like, why don't you talk bad about Muslims? What's wrong with Muhammad? Tell me what's wrong with Muhammad. And I always tell them the same thing. I'm like, I don't talk about that because they're not up in my grill, right? Well, I didn't realize, or he, he I did, I knew, but it just kind of right over my head because I was busy. But I didn't realize that now they're coming in my room and they're asking the question. But they're actually Muslims from, you know, rather than being Christians. And they were coming over legitimately asking, hey, why aren't you talking about Islam? And, you know, or, you know they'd challenge us if they were pro-Muslim or if they were, you know what I mean? And it was an interesting conversation. I had to reset my gears and go, oh, okay, 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 okay. You're not a Christian. Because normally I'd give them the whole, you know, Islam isn't up in my grill trying to oppress my females. That's over somewhere else, you know. But in this case, I was talking to someone who was probably possibly over somewhere else. So it made, you know, it made for a very interesting show. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let me catch up with the chat here. Yep. Wes Ember Mernon. Good morning, Philosophish. Thank you for joining me. Man, it's, it's really great to see everybody, including the new viewers. There's so many people on Twitch. I'm getting Twitch viewers. They kind of ain't right, though, you know, because they twitch a lot. Anyway, um, so and YouTube and, and all this stuff. So it's been fantastic. So one of the things I want to talk about this morning, um, this is kind of a first for me, is I've built up the channel and I, I spread my craziness and I post these long-form videos. You're familiar with the evil God Monster of Abraham series. And uh, for the first time, some Christians out there have been making response videos to my, you know... Um, to my videos and I, I think that's kind of cool it got I, I feel I feel um like I'm, I'm for reals now I'm authentic I'm a real atheist now <laughs> um wow that's that's awesome that the Muslims are streaming and watching this show um the the episodes and everything that's great I very much appreciate that um it, to be honest it's a little scary <laughs> you know what I mean you know what I mean. I don't want to get into it necessarily. That's not what I'm meaning to get into. But, you know, yeah, they're, they tend to be a little more fervent in their beliefs. Anyway, so I want to share with you these guys. One of the things is, of course, what they've done, as you can obviously understand, is they saw my video, they disagreed with it, and they decided they needed to put me in my place. And, you know, I mean, the first one really burns. I want to share it with you now. Um... They're just jealous how amazing you are. Does response videos are just their insecure? Yeah, no. Well, but yeah, we'll see how this goes. Let me share this with you. I've been I've been rebuilding this show. Matter of fact, I'm gonna probably switch to OBS instead of Streamlabs. It just depends on how. Uh, I'm sharing this screen. Hopefully, you can hear me. Oh man. Oh wait, I can fix that. I can fix that. No, I can't. Can I fix that? I can't. Oh, I can fix that. Hold on a second. Wait, no, nah, it'll screw everything up you'll just have to see the chat over my beautiful face today how's that for now i'll fix that later okay chris where are you man shared screen so here we go this guy as you can see now the i'm gonna pop open here uh i you gotta bear with me uh stop let's go to description 
What the hell, my... What's wrong with you people? Stop it! Okay, so this chapter is the biggest sausage party yet in the Bible. It's going to tell Hello, us computer. all the descendants of the three sons okay. of Noah and how they are... The so this chapter, I don't know, can you guys hear this? This is awesome. So, I know it's a little vague, but you know, it just kind of says, where is it? Damn it. Description. There. I don't know. I know it has a description. It's just being a jerk. Anyway. The ancestors of all the tribes of these various peoples throughout the world. And not a single woman is mentioned. Okay. The complete repopulation of the earth and the spawning of hundreds of nations. Yet not a single mom, sister, daughter, or wife is ever named. Okay, so this... So this chapter I'm talking about is actually chapter 10. The entirety of chapter 10, if you're watching the, the video, the entirety of chapter 10, they don't mention women at all. He says, yes, they mention women and stuff. Yeah, I know they do in that chapter. That's not what I'm talking about. But even in that chapter, <laughs> but even in that chapter, it's like they repopulate the entire earth and they only say sons and daughters. They don't name any women. No women have any honor. And that's really kind of bugging me. I gotta fix that. Boom, boom, boom. My dog's over here snoring. I hope you guys don't mind it. So let me go here. Under leave of Brutus and the rest. I'm just gonna do this. There we go, guys. Sorry about that. I'll fix it later. I was I was doing stuff. See if that makes it more gooder. There we go. More gooder. Now you can kind of see my my pretty face a lot of times. So as you can imagine, the burn. All right. But now the next one. This is kind of interesting. I watched part of it myself. Um, and of course, if the chat changes what we're talking about, I completely understand. We do that all the time. So, uh, and this guy here, I'm going to speed him up after the opening. I, I want you to, okay. Uh, hi D four vid H four X zero R. Thank you for watching the show. No, I don't need good subscribers. I have plenty. <laughs> Sorry. We get a lot of people trying to sell me subscribers. Um, so there's a couple things going on with this video before I get into it, and let's 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 watch this guy. Um, he's gonna he's gonna review one of my videos, and I want you to know that the amazing super kiss is going to do. I'm gonna I'm gonna respond. I've thought about doing a response. Um, I'm probably gonna do a response because I mean, wait till you see. Okay, but there are good things. Let me start off, and let me just see if I can get things going here. We're gonna. This is the if you will podcast. I guess we're gonna skip this. Um, wanted to say something really quick before the video starts. Um, I apologize Make for it sounding despondent uh, during this video. I, you know, as I told you guys, I don't want to like fake my videos and pretend to like be happy and stuff like when I'm having a bad uh, day with my symptoms. So the depression was really bad. And so, um, that, that's why I sound the way I do. Um, okay. So I get this, right? A lot of us deal with depression. Here is a video. I believe he's made God in my depression, God in depression. He, you know, I mean, apparently I'm gonna leave that between him and his God. I just kind of wanted to notice that. So he's got that going on. He thought I didn't, wouldn't have noticed if you watch the rest of the video, I'm gonna skip on here and you'll see, this is the actual response video of him. But if you watch it, I, I've never seen the guy before. I would have noticed he was <laughs> he was down or despondent. You know, had he not prefaced his video with you know letting us know that he was down. So I I do appreciate that. I, I've there's part of me, my, part of me I've considered that in my response and first of all in your response, if you decide to go look at this guy's channel or anything, I don't let's be nice first of all. <laughs> Until it's time to not be nice. There's a couple of things. One is that, you know, one is that he did he did this video. And if, as far as I went and looked in his comments and they were all his, his, his own viewers, those people who have watched his video were up against him. He, he, it was just like, they were, blah, 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 blah. and he's like, oh, well, you know, you know what I mean? I didn't have to go defend myself. He had to go defend his God. Um, that's freaking awesome. David Axford. Haxer, that's cool. Cause I, you know, I was running a show here, man. Quit picking on me, Spooky. I think Spooky just called me an idiot. <laughs> subtle as it was, subtle. Anyway, so as far as this guy, you know, I mean, I and I feel for his his depression and all that stuff. Um, I do. I, I and it's making me make it. It has me wonder about 
how gentle I should be with my response. You know, because usually when I engage with Christians, they're very obstinate, you know, outspoken, jerks. I'm not really getting that from this guy yet. <laughs> um, matter of fact, he almost seemed like, I, you know, I, I kind of, my first thoughts really being who I am and building channels and stuff. I'm, I'm like, dude, you need to do this. You need to do that. Get rid of this. Get rid of that. Oh, and you could do a little bit of editing here and here, and your shit would be so much good. Look at your thing, man. Atheist accuses God of being evil. It's not bad, dude. That's not bad. But if you were to, like, Christian destroys atheist or Christian exposes atheist, you know, that's really popular. Christian versus atheist. Atheist loses. You know, I mean, you'd go a long way to do that. And then come in here and cut out some of your video and, you know... Because it's just me. That's how I am. I'd like to help the guy build his channel. And I'm like, dude, stop. This guy ain't right in the head. <laughs> he's He worships an evil god monster. And he's challenging your... Just shut up and watch his video, Chris. Here we go. Let's see what this guy has to say. But, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys that heads up. So I really wanted to get... Them. I S wish... Skip ahead. In ...this content help. Okay. Um, consider uh, liking and subscribing if you find this content helpful. Um and edifying for yourself you know um sean alexander the point sean alexander points out in the chat he says uh, i'm gonna switch this here off of studio mode um he says in the chat i really hope he is getting real mental health help and not just relying on praying me too brother me too and that will actually be part of my um response video whenever i do a response video that's absolutely going to be part of it. let me go here sorry guys i got my little robot vacuum thing work what can it's magic and i don't want to get up in my grill while i do the show um you know what i mean so let, let's go ahead here and and i'll so we're gonna look at a video that is made by well an atheist um and he's doing i guess a series about what he calls i guess the series is um the shame of christianity i think and it's just the shame of Christianity one, the shame, shame of Christianity two, the shame of Christianity three. Um, and I think he's trying to go through the Bible. And unfortunately, it seems that his point is to try his absolute hardest to make God out to be evil. Uh, which is okay. interesting. I kind of want an atheist, but I want to kind of point out this. It, I mean, at this I'll point, tell you why that's interesting. Easy there, brother. Easy. So, at this point, he throws out a lot of. I think this is. I think this is what he's doing. I think this is what he's doing. If he did any kind of real research on the video, like even just read the basic description of the first video, yeah, it's Christianity Shame One because it's a series. He started on episode one. But it's actually the evil God monster of Abraham series and it's Book of Death. And um, the, you know, there's a series. It's a, it's a series. So the names would be the same. I'm just saying, brother, as you go through and you continue growing your own channel, I don't even know the dude's name. Anyway, he may have said it. I'll just call him brother for now. Brother man. So let's, oh, oh, you don't have to try real hard. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to start making content, just catching up with the chat here, being nice. I want to catch, uh, but you don't have to see the proper motivation to get. You know, I feel that. I feel that. I feel that. Uh, Nitty, hello, Nitty. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to have you along there, um, along with us, joining the show. So I'm going to continue on with this thing here. I'm going to let him continue going. Thing, uh, and I will a little bit later for me and you, for all of us, my friends. And I get it. I don't. And I'm not trying to be mean to the guy. Okay. Um, apparently he's dealing with something. I'm going to speed him up. I, I do this anyway, especially if I'm watching like learning programs or something. So no disrespect intended. I'm just going to speed him up. So let's just uh, not delay. And it does enhance his Twitch though. <laughs> just... Orla would be so mad at me. <laughs> Listen to what he has to say. I guess we're beginning from Genesis. Look, first, I want to mention that I use the mm -hmm. NIV version of the Bible found on BibleGateway.com. Unless there's some rhetorical point I'm trying to make which requires a more ancient version, this is the one I plan to use. It is, of course, the inerrant word of God, so it shouldn't matter which one I use. Okay, I want to stop right there and say I do appreciate him showing this. Um, it was nice of him to, uh, I mean, because oftentimes they'll miss content. And, and, and 
some people be like, you need to look back into this and translate this and ancient translations and all this. I'm like, no, no, that, this is the best selling Bible in the entire world. It's good enough for everybody to go down and preach out of. It's good enough for me to just pick up and go through, you know? And so I appreciate that he let me, he kept that in there. Here we go. I don't know if he's going to go through the whole episode or not. <laughs> Now, as we all know, the first couple of chapters of the Bible are all about creation. In this episode, we're going to talk about the book of Genesis, chapter 1, which is a wide-angle view of God creating. Again, me, I'm like, dude, do a little editing here. At that point, you should, like, edit me out of the image, edit you out, and then blow up whatever it is I got there on the screen. That's kind of what you ought to do. And whenever it goes away, then put you back on the heavens and the earth and the creatures, the waters, and then finally, man. Of course, there's nothing evil God monster-like about this, is there? Well, technically. Actually. Absolutely. Yes, it's just hard to see. But if you look, you'll find it. I mean, you know, uh, Nitty uh, has a good point here. Content, uh, response content takes time and editing. If you're into it, to win it, in to win it, that's true. Then you have to do at least some basic editing. I totally get that. I'm still developing things, as you know. I've, I mean, as you can see from my show, I kind of put a lot of effort into that sort of thing. I'm learning. This, the, the videos he is watching are four years old. I made that a long time ago, and I just re recently re-released it to build content and grow channels. Uh, you know, you can find those videos. It's in the description of my thing. Carthiest. Um, let's see. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Catching up. So let me just go back. Yeah, yeah. so I, I get it. He's just got a very small channel. He's just now starting it, um, getting it started. He's only got like... I don't know, very few v viewers. Let me check and see how many subscribers he's got. He's got 28 subscribers. And I know what he's doing. What happened was this showed up in my, in my, um, of course, he was the second. Remember the first one I showed you was just some guy doing, he just pretty much played my entire video and had some things saying you're wrong. <laughs> but he didn't watch the whole, he didn't look at the description. Because um, in the description it says, this is Genesis chapter 10. Anyway, um, so I just kind of, yeah, yeah. It isn't in a car no he isn't in a car uh he is apparently in his bedroom and i have to say i appreciate the like the wall and the the i don't remember the, the accent i dig that that's cool and i like the wood i like that they didn't paint over it i mean i dig his stuff the bed behind there and that stuff I, I, you know i mean there's gotta be a better wall but that's me the content creator going dude you got you 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 don't got a good mic you got a good sound you really kind of need to speed your stuff up a little bit but otherwise but then, just shut up, Chris. No, he don't need no help. If this God is real and is responsible for creating all the creatures on earth, then he created a world where an uncountable number, certainly well into the trillions, of creatures who have existed throughout time have had to survive by killing and eating other creatures. Murder, death, kill, murder, death, kill, murder, death, kill, in one form or another since the dawn of time. The perfect opener to the book of death. To the book of death. Very dramatic. Um, so, first off, yeah, I, I let him, I'll let him like speak and say his piece and make his point before I stop the video, uh, I think it would be irritating um, for you guys to for me to stop every time he makes uh, uh, some wrong statement or untrue claim about the, the Bible okay. and who God is. And who but God it is. seems to me that his objection, well, I guess it would be unfair to say that it's an objection because really he just hates God. It's just, that's his whole point. <laughs> we should have like atheist bingo going on here and you know the hates god thing man you'd have got that that should be the center square i hate god <laughs> damn you god y'all can see the fist right i just sit around masturbating thinking about how bad god is <laughs> good morning son of fire i hope that wasn't the first thing you ever heard me say hello by the way uh good morning everybody thank you for joining us uh, nice to see all the wonderful new people um on Twitch and the other channels. Uh, hopefully we're streaming also to uh, Skeptic Haven's channel. We're working on that. I've, I'm kind of too busy right now. Hating God is a bit silly. Yeah, I hate God, right? So obvious, but clearly I hate God. The point in my video that I'm watching, and he's, all right, let me let, let him, let me let him speak a little bit more, okay? All right, right. He said, even with God cre creating, he calls it the book of death, but even in God creating, he said God's already done something evil because he created. And, but he stresses, you know, did he do anything wrong? Maybe a little bit, <laughs> if you look at it hard enough. And I think that's one of the problems. Well, okay, I get that. Is that... Shut up, Chris. Let him uh, talk. Sir, you are looking at this, trying to force the, your understanding of what wrong and right means, of what evil is, onto God, and you are willing to read as much into... I mean... It, 
Okay, real quick, I want to kind of point out, there's two things, two ways that people interpret the Bible. One way is that people read it, Christians primarily, they read it and they like make it all soft and fuzzy. You know what I mean? They make it like nice and sweet and they somehow find a beautiful message out of it. And then other people like me read it and we read it for what it is, a bloody book of texts of hate and just violence and incest and all this wonderful stuff. And yet... So whenever, whenever this happens, here's what happens. Two people pick up a Bible, and one of us has to really do what he's saying, really kind of look hard for the thing, you know, really stretch to make their point of view. The other one doesn't. Their point of view really sticks out. Let's go back and see what he's saying here. The, your understanding of what wrong and right means, did he do anything wrong? Maybe a little bit if you look at it hard enough. And I think that's one of the problems is that, uh, sir, you are looking at this, trying to force the, your understanding of what wrong and right means, of what evil is, onto God. And you are willing to read as much into, I mean, it, Here it comes. sounds like you're reading this right into Genesis 1, 1 or 1, 2, that uh, God had maliciously uh desire to create in order to put things to death and that's just not true well well yeah uh, actually it kind of is um here I'll, I'll i'll argue that point real quick in that when god created now here's the here's a little bit of a thing i think we get into it when god created people in the genesis one it was like in the first genesis genesis one or create cr created animals it doesn't really say in there that animals had to eat animals it doesn't i don't think it says that maybe it does i don't think so but it does get to that eventually it says that and i even address that in my video i'm like listen it may not have done it here but later on if you're going to say that the fall of man is what caused animals to know death and murder and you know there's somewhere out in the world there's a right now right now there's going on some small beautiful furry creature is getting viciously torn up by like a bear or some other creature right now as we speak it's got to be happening some fish somewhere is swimming along going oh my oh my he's trying to get away he's terrified he's terrified it's sheer terror as some other creature is gobbling him up right now thousands and thousands of times over and you're gonna say this individual christians christians say the reason why this happens because the fall of man man did something wrong so trillions literally if we're talking you know the evolution of all the things trillions of creatures were made and have to kill and eat each other because man did something wrong that's what that's what the bible is saying that's how bad man is you know and that's kind of where i'm going now all right, so let me get let him get back to his thing. But again, I don't know why. I guess I don't know. I mean, obviously, animals we we all love our animals, um, but it's wrong. He says uh, that the, they have to be created and then they have to eat each other to stay alive. The biblical perspective is, and uh, now I just want to hold on. My my point is it, what what I don't know if he's getting it or not. Is that if you're an all powerful God. And you have a choice between creating creatures that can just absorb the light from the sun, the energy from the sun, and not have to other eat other creatures, or a god that eat, you know makes the world. If you make that choice, right? We're not talking about evolution. We're not talking about my beliefs. We're talking about their beliefs, right? If you have a god that makes that choice to where he's going to force every animal most every animal to kill and eat other animals in order to survive that's horrific whenever he could have made it that's my point that's the point of the video uh i don't know if he's getting it or not let me catch up with some of the chat here good morning uh, michael bell thank you for joining us the very concept violates the law of non-contradiction something can't be omni all good and all evil that's right i mean they, yeah that's a whole other conversation and then the, <laughs> good morning logan nice to join you guys new people don't forget to subscribe. Love to have you with us. Uh, catch more of my crazy. I do the live show uh, here on the Daily Atheist Morning Show. I also drop uh, videos uh, exposing the Bible. And this is what this guy has done for those of you who are just showing up. He saw the first video of my evil God Monster of Abraham series. And uh, he did a response video to it. And we're just kind of going through it. So it's very, very nice of you guys to join us on this. Uh, I'm going to let him talk some more. Um, I'm going to be telling you from what the Reformed position for any of his objections so you know in the future i'm going to be 
And that's fair on his part. He's going to, just like I did whenever I said, I'm going to be using the NIV Bible and this is why. And if I need to use an older version for my rhetoric, I will. But don't go telling me to go use an older version and learn because most people don't, right? But in his defense, he's telling me he's using like a new reformed version. Be answering from the reformed perspective, from uh, the reformed theology. And so um, his assertion that... Um, animals had to from the beginning eat other animals is not true because there was no death prior to the fall there was no death but even if let's just say he's he's right about this let's just say let's say for the sake of argument for the okay? sake of argument let's say he's right what's your point what are you okay that let me well, now this is kind of a, i hate to that i've already preempted it i Apparently he missed the point, right? The point was just like I just explained. If you're a god and you're an omnipresent, omni everything god, and you have a choice between creating creatures that have to kill and eat each other versus create creatures who could just simply get light from all their energy from the sunlight, you know, you've chosen. He woke up and chose violence that day. You know, that's the point. Accusing God of evil. Yes. On what basis do you even define evil on an atheistic worldview? Okay, all right, I got I to gotta let the guy go. I got to let him go because, I mean, I, every time I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I got to let him go. On what basis do you even define evil on an atheistic worldview, a naturalistic, materialistic worldview? You cannot, there, there is no, no such thing as evil or good or right or wrong. It's just your own opinion how you feel about it you can say something is really perfect and you can say something is uncomfortable to you something you don't like but that's as far as any moral claim you're going to be able to do uh to so basically atheists have no because we have you know basically where he's getting into is because we have no god we have no moral center and we can't determine what is right or wrong without god telling us that bring goes because you can't make an oral argument and i would like for you if you're going to do a whole series on this you need to make a video at least attempting to try to ground um some sort of uh justification for the moral claims that you make you are making moral assertions establish the basis on which you do that from the christian perspective god is the moral foundation for all things his goodness his very nature his law, which is a reflection of his nature, tells us what is evil and what is wrong. Okay. All right. So I got this, guys. Here's here's the thing. Let's individual. If you're watching, brother man, um, you get all your good and evil. You get a, you everything you know about good and evil and right and wrong. You learn from the Bible. What I would like you, if you can, if you do respond or if you see this video, give me a list of the things that you learn from the Bible. What's good and what's right and what's wrong, what's evil and what's not. I mean, literally, give me a list. Is it right and wrong to, or wrong, right or wrong or evil to cheat on your taxes? Is it right or wrong? How do you determine that? Does it say that in the Bible? Is it right or wrong to, I don't know, take female children as sex slaves it does say that in your bible by the way it does so where you get objectively right and then then they get the whole art before they go on they also get the whole thing listen oh no that's the old testament that's what we're talking about actually in fact is the old testament so don't talk about your jesus and then go you know. so i mentioned in the old testament that it, it does say to take uh underage girls or uh, girls as Sex slave. It says that. Now you're going to go, Jesus is the new covenant and Jesus is this and Jesus is that. And since Jesus sacrificed himself, we don't have to do. And that, that Old Testament doesn't mean crap. That's where we're going to go. This is where it always goes. It's like the bingo. Bingo. Um. Okay. All right. So Jesus is God. So just because Jesus came along and said that or, or it's like Jesus, it would, did Jesus wash away our sins or God's sins? And so again, to his point, how does this guy go through his day? How does this go through his day and know right from wrong? Because there's so many things that are not covered in the Bible. It does not say that you can't go beat up a, a 
security guard at a holy site. It doesn't say, matter of fact, the Old Testament encourages it. It tells them to go kill the old men outside the temple in one instance. Whenever I mean, you know what I mean? So where does this guy get his morals from the Bible? So another example, it would be, listen, dude, I'm going to tell you how you and I, if you're watching, brother man, how you and I both get our morals and our just our just our basis of right and wrong. Right and wrong turns to good and evil. Let's just start with that, okay? Right and wrong. Is it right to stick water ice trays in the refrigerator? Well, full of water. Well, if it depends on your objective. If you want ice, then no, it's not wrong. It is indeed right to do so. But if you want water, then yes, it is wrong, okay? So now just take those to the extreme. Yes, now you have a poison and it only works in ice form. So you have to freeze it so you can kill your husband. Now is it evil? All you're doing is freezing ice. You know, I mean, we put those labels on it and society, we as a society, as our societies determine. I mean, the way to hear this guy tell it, we walk around with no form of right or wrong because we don't have God to, to lead us. But Jesus, that's, sorry, Jesus. Sorry, Jesus. <laughs> I was raised Christian, you know, so those, those but you see what I mean? Uh, this notion that because we don't follow their God, well, man, there's so many people out there that don't follow their God. How does the world not just freaking implode to hear this guy? How do we have any morals at all? Again. The Bible that he's talking about doesn't have morals by our standards. So, and, and he's going to bash my balls on that. He's going to give me the, oh, you're not a God. You can't determine what's good and evil. Go, only God does that. Mm, right. We know. Let me that catch up on the chapter. Well, I'll, I'll do that while he talks. Is wrong. It is evil. And it, it, how do I know that though? What keeps me from going around and murdering people? What, right? Is it just the law? Is it? Is that the only thing that keeps me from? Come on, brother, work harder than that. Use your brain. It is evil of the highest kind. Good morning, Logan Fisher. Thank you for joining us. Michael Bell, let's see. The sun gives us life, also gives us cancer. That's true. But it doesn't have to, see? The sun could give us everything we need. It could, I mean, neutrinos, actually, we could get neutrinos. We could live, if God wanted to, we could live off neutrinos. Why would we want to do that? Because we can get neutrinos whether we're underwater. We get neutrinos whether we're... Um, um, hold our breath whether the sun is on the other side of the planet it doesn't matter we always get so it's not like we would ever starve to death right he could have done that and then we wouldn't have to hurt nobody no 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 his 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 like first reaction was murder death kill to the bloodiest extreme that was his first reaction horrific each creature has to eat each other now of course i don't believe in god right i believe in science and objectively there's this chain of reasons why lions eat bambi Right, I know why lions eat Bambi. I, as an L, as an intelligent creature, determine: Do I want to continue that cycle, or do I I want to eat vegetation and not continue inflicting that harm on other creatures? Now, I can't make all creatures out there not eat each other. That's just ridiculous to even think I could. But I can, you know, just break the cycle. You know what I'm saying? And I do as much as I can. I still eat meat. I'm a bad person. I still eat meat. I don't actually. But that's the whole thing. I don't actually go killing harm other animals i don't harm animals myself to do it if i did then i'd be a complete vegan vegetarian kind of right that's just how most of us all are if we had to go out and kill our own cows i would be a little less hesitant about it it gets complicated uh, sk brain dead atheist thank you for joining us always love um somebody to come in and immediately go ad hominem thank you um <laughs> It's one of those, you've seen that thing, right? That that quote by Aristotle, it says, you know, when you, the debate is lost, when the opponent goes, when when slander, when, when you resort to slander. Thank you. Javon R., is it okay to murder someone who is helping you move your chest because the cart hit a pothole and he touched it to keep you for, well, yeah, I would say probably so. Yeah, it, sound, it depends on the Bible. Javon, thank you for joining us. It does sound like that's something that the Bible would indeed condone. Yes. Um, even a vegan still eats plants. Plants are still alive. That's a very good point. The only way we'd have to solve that problem is to like wait till the plants died and then eat it. You know, what I mean, depends on how, how you're going to go there. So let me let this guy go on. But he can't say that. He he can try to say it, but he is stepping into my worldview in order to make a claim, a moral claim. 
He has to step into the Christian worldview from a naturalistic materialistic perspective. You don't have that. So I would like to see that. I do not. I do not. Again, I, I don't have to have Christianity could simply not exist and I could still be a moral person and know right from wrong and not to kill people. I appreciate. Uh, thank you for playing, though. <laughs> We're going to do a whole series on this. But that's what I have to say about what he's saying so far. It doesn't make any sense. I could throw it right back at him. Aren't you an evolutionist? <laughs> do you not believe that you are the production yes, I do. of this evil process? Yes, I do. You are the production of millions of years from your Well, see, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, I do. I agree. Yeah. Your perspective yep. of evil billions. and evil and evil. Are no, I already explained that though. Ours is not it's not it's not a matter of evil. Uh animals in the wild aren't generally known for cruelty necessarily. Um, they generally kill and eat because they have to, because they must, right? And so it's a science and evolutionary thing. Again, I don't put moral judgments on a lion for eating a, a thing. That's that's what it does. But creatures that are smarter to make the difference, that's different, right? And and we make that, that decision. Eating the sun, that's blasphemy. Only the sun is... <laughs> Dwarven Dad, thank you for joining us. Uh, people weren't moral before Christianity was found. Yeah, how did it? How did it happen? I mean, did they not know? Well, no. Actually, one of the in the Old Testament, they've got the the Ten Commandments that tells them things. You know, <laughs> that's where. What? But what happened before the Ten Commandments? Good morning, Hank. Thank you for joining us today. Nice to see you. Um, nice to see everybody. I want to again say hi to everybody. We're hopefully streaming on, uh, of course, the Day of the Atheist Morning Channel, Morning Show Channel. I am uh, kind of partnering up for those of you who are just now joining us with Skeptic Haven, and hopefully I'm streaming over on their channel as well. Not sure. We we just kind of threw it together this morning. We'll see. And uh, we're also streaming to Twitch. So thank you to everybody who's joining us this morning as we go over our craziness. Geo Sam, thank you for joining us. The party can now get started. There, are, these are not accusations of evil. Biblical text itself demonstrates this. Yeah, I mean we're re we're reading it. F obviously, I'm taking the Bible and I'm reading it objectively as a modern day non Christian believer. It's not being filtered through some priest, right? I'm just reading it like somebody who's not a believer and going, "Damn, what kind of God is this?" You see what I mean? That's I mean, I state that right kind of from the beginning. Um, let's see. All right, so let's go back here and let the guy. I, I, I mean, I, I do appreciate if you're watching, um, Brother Man, that uh, or when you watch, that your patience with me for pausing so often. On evil, you're just the production of that. Yes. Well, but it's not evil. It's it just go? evolution. I don't understand even from your own perspective. He could have just stopped at the word understand. Damn it, Chris. Sorry. Um, they stole the whole golden rule from... Oh, yeah, the golden rule. I mean, the Ten Commandments. Uh, the Ten Commandments, well, they got from Egypt. There was the Ten... They have a Decalogue of their own. They didn't... They created nothing. They are the Elon Musk of religions. How this makes any sense. It's survival of the fittest, right? It's survival of the fittest. So that is a wonderful point. Thank you. Thank you, Ember. Ember says, if people weren't moral before Jesus or Moses, or if there was no morality before then, if they had no guide for what was moral before then, then how could Yahweh condemn the people before that to the flood? Let me read that right. Let me read that right. To, to everything. Yeah. How they, how, I mean, yeah, there was wickedness right from the beginning. And whenever you go to chapter four of the Bible, um, and of course, at this point, we haven't had Moses in the Ten Commandments or none of that business. But, you know, Cain killed Abel. That was bad. Well, okay, that was bad. You know? And in that chapter, it even says whenever God is lashing out at Cain for being jealous of Abel because Abel did less work and got more praise from God, God is like, when you know, whenever you do wrong, when you do right, don't you, you know, get the glory of God. But whenever you do wrong, sin is crouching at your door. Right, so keep your these people don't know how to keep their story straight. Uh, how are we? How was he supposed to know what sin was if he hadn't heard of the Ten Commandments or the six hundred and eight commandments, or if he hadn't heard of Jesus? And why would you punish him for those things? And why would why would you punish him with long life and many children, and not having to work the ground, and yet punish uh, for killing his brother, and then for Eve, all she did was eat the fruit and give it to Adam. <laughs> 
which she wasn't there whenever Adam was told not to eat it. And he was there when it was given to her. So he should have stopped her. But she was punished really bad. Lie, birth and all this. And she's subservient to her man. You know, isn't that kind of stupid? It's really just men wanting to keep their oppression of women. So the strongest get to determine what is right and what is wrong. Right? Because they can enforce their own view, their own opinion on what is right and wrong on others. Yeah, it's just he's contradicted himself already and he's put himself in a spot. That all I've said <laughs> all I've said so far in the video is that well maybe he's watched. It. I'll let him go. That leaves him go. unable to justify any of what he's saying. Um especially when you're going to charge God with evil. Let's start with man. Start charging him with evil and make a basis to do so. Let's wind it a bit and go have had to survive by killing and eating other creatures murder that's all i've said that you know that's all i've said i haven't contradicted myself all i've said so far is that god created that based on their story god created these animals and chose to have them kill and eat each other that's all i've said there's no if you can point the contradiction out there let me know i mean maybe i'm just missing it death kill murder death kill murder death kill in one form or another since the dawn of time the perfect opener to the book of death and it's really perfect in its insidiousness it talks about creation in a manner some people see as divine and beautiful and see this is the whole thing that's what i'm talking about earlier one of us can go look how hideous this just read it sit here and read this about how this says it's got to do this now i do say that you have to interpret it that way it does say it created the people the creatures you have to go okay and then they eat each other you know, it doesn't say in there they created them and they didn't have to eat each other and they, you know, they just lived forever and didn't have to have any problems. They just created. So I can get that. That's a tiny bit. But this whole one of us has to really stretch to make the Bible, especially this first chapter is kind of a little bit on the weak side. But you start getting into it like the next chapter and the chapter after that, and then it just starts getting on. And it's really hard to defend this God monster at all. But there's no mention of how, in order for any and all these creatures to survive, they must partake in the slaughter of, and or consumption of, the flesh of other animals. I mean, there's this big ball of energy right there in the sky, and an all-knowing, almighty God could have made it to where every creature simply needed to absorb sunlight to live. But no. In all his wisdom and judgment, in this, his perfect creation, we must kill or scavenge on other living things to survive. Wholesale slaughter on a scale which is difficult, if not impossible, to comprehend. Exhibit A. <laughs> is he praying? Is he not looking at the screen? Uh, what's going on here? I, I, now, I got to be honest, guys. This was about as far as I watched earlier. I, didn't, I don't think I watched even this far the first time. Uh, so what the hell is going I mean, maybe he's, I don't know, maybe he's texting somebody. It looks like he's praying. <laughs> he can't handle this, the images. Every creature simply needed to absorb sunlight to live. But no. In all his wisdom and judgment, in this, his perfect creation. That's fantastic. And it philosoph philosophical gamer? That's right. That's exactly what you are. It is the inception of atheism. We must kill or scavenge on other living things to survive. Wholesale. <laughs> My viewers are like, gee, I wonder how Chris is going to shove his evil god monster of uh, Abraham series in our face today. <laughs> well... <laughs> I found a new way, my friends. Slaughter on a scale which is difficult, if not impossible, to comprehend. Dear Jesus, pray protect me from this evil atheist. <laughs> Let me not hear his words. <laughs> I think that's the reason why they used to bind the mouths of people back in the day, because they would actually speak reason to them, and they'd talk them out of doing whatever they were doing. So that's why they bound, bound their mouths and called it like they'd speak spells or witchcraft, and that's what got them out. But really, they were just talking sense into them. Exhibit A, the first piece of damning evidence which I use to justify calling it the evil god monster of Abraham is book one, chapter one of its own story. Oh, what's going on? Um, okay, so ball of energy. Everything I've said about his moral claims just stand, so I'm not going to reiterate myself a hundred times. Um, but he mentioned something about a ball in the sky and you could do whatever you want with it. Uh, sir, we are not Mormons. Um, we do not believe that matter has always existed and that you could essentially rearrange matter into how you want it to be to create the earth life whatever it is that you want to do that's a mormon belief so you can make talking about a uh, oh oh, oh i was talking about my god how dumb can these people be you didn't hear that y'all didn't hear that I mean, I was just talking about the sun. 
I was talking about the sun. I wasn't talking about us making something. Right? We all covered that, right? All I was talking about was getting energy from the sun. The sun, and then I broke it all the way down to if you wanted to, uh, you could actually just, you didn't even have to get sunlight, perhaps. God could have made it to where it was neutrinos, which passed through the earth and through the water. So any creature anywhere could not have to worry about energy. He could always get it. That, that from the sun, though. I'm just saying, all I'm saying is God could have made creatures that got their energy from the sun, like like plants. But without the plants having to get it from, you know. Um, do, do, do you guys see the disconnect? Or am I just crazy? Let me just kind of rewind just a little bit. Shame of essentially rearrange matter into how you want it to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hold on, let me go back. Comprehend. Exhibit A, the first piece of where every creature simply needed to absorb sunlight to live. But no, in all his wisdom, and maybe he was just praying and didn't realize. I, was, I even said absorb sunlight. I couldn't have been, I don't understand where he gets, where he goes from me talking about animals being able to absorb sunlight. Now, I didn't say that neutrino thing in that video, but in real life here, I did say it. But, but still, I don't know where he gets ghost from. In judgment, in this, his perfect creation, we must kill or scavenge yeah. other living things to survive. Wholesale slaughter on a scale which is difficult, if not impossible, to comprehend. Exhibit A, the first piece of damning evidence which I use to justify calling it the evil god monster of Abraham, is book one, chapter one, of its own story. Oh, what's going on? Um, okay, so... <laughs> Okay, I'm going to pause right there, guys. It, I'm going to go get me a cup of coffee. I just need to refill my coffee cup, so I'm going to keep you entertained, especially the new viewers. I'm going to play something for you that I think you will, in case you don't know if atheism for, is for you or not. Life is complicated. These are trying times. There are many questions that need answering. Want to know what's going to help? Atheism. With atheism, you'll get rid of dogma, superstitions, and toxic thought patterns that are holding you back. You can drive while taking atheism, as well as use heavy machinery. In fact, drinking alcohol, fornicating, and Sunday mornings are far more enjoyable with atheism. However, there are side effects. Some evangelicals and fundamentalists will think you are possessed by the devil. But you don't have to worry, because you know the devil isn't real. Just like God. Wake up to your life. Yourself. There we are. Commercial come off, or cut off early. Good thing I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> When the camera shut off. All right, so let's see here. Let's go back to gentleman here. Let's see what he's doing. Ball of energy. Everything I've said about his moral claims just stand, so I'm not going to reiterate myself a hundred times. Um, but he mentioned something about a ball in the sky, and you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, sir, we are not. That's not what I said. I said there's a ball in the sky, and you could get the energy from it. And now he's going to go off in Mormon. I have no idea. If you're an ex-Mormon, maybe you might understand clarify in the chat for me what the hell this guy is talking about and if you can especially in 128 characters or less, <laughs> how the hell did he get like from solar power to mormon god planet creating stuff <laughs> i don't know drugs are bad man drugs are bad mormon um we do not believe <laughs> that matter has always existed and that you could who's we do do Mormons believe that matter has always existed? I mean, I kind of do from the, yeah. I mean, it just depends on science. I would go ask the scientists. Good morning, Salty. Yeah, I saw you earlier. I hope you're there. I hope everything's going good. I subscribed to your channel. Mormons believe that God organized matter. Well, wouldn't they all believe that? I mean, or maybe the other ones don't believe in matter. I don't know. My, I got, <laughs> I was getting a little excited earlier as you guys heard and my little puppy dog um daisy dukes the one who she's here she's gonna say hi to everybody oh my goodness here's daisy she's our sound operator one of my tech team she <laughs> when papa starts making uh getting all uh, <laughs> daffy duck on stuff she comes <laughs> she's like you okay papa you okay and i'm like yeah get back to running the sound you little mutt she's a cutie she looks like a miniature black lab um 
Yes, awesome sauce. Let me put you back over there. Don't forget to hook the pups up with the pup cup. There's a little pup cup. A clip thing down there if you want to hook us up with a pup cup. That's awesome. Because um, people don't buy me coffee, but they'll buy them a pup cup. So, I mean, I had that coffee thing up there for a freaking month in this show. And I'm like, nobody bought me a coffee. And I showed the dog, and I'm like, buy them a pup cup. And they got three that day. Because people like dogs, I guess. <laughs> They're awesome. Okay, I'm back. We're back here. So, good morning, Mark. Thank you for joining us. Yes, Logan. Uh, that's That's Daisy. And I've got five of them, five dogs. Not one or two or three or four, but five dogs. Sadie is here. She's our oldest puppy. I'd pick her up, but she's kind of, she's really comfy. If you hear snoring during the show, it's Sadie. <laughs> and I'm going to get pictures up. I'm going to make some pictures where I can show you guys my dogs. Who's the director? I am the director. I do the directing. Uh, Sadie is the camera operator. Jack does the lighting. He's our PTSD dog. Uh, Ollie is the newest member of our team. He is a um, multi-poo. Um, and he, uh, well, he's a multi-poo mutt, and we rescued him. Um, most of our dogs are rescues, by the way. We rescue. Go rescue a dog. They'll rescue you back. Um, but, yeah, and Ollie is our engineer. He's our new engineer, works the computers and stuff like that. And then, of course, Bailey, she's our scripty. She works the script and makes sure I, I don't say stupid things. <sighs> yeah, so back to this guy. Let's get back onto this guy. Let him Essentially rearrange matter into how you want it to be to create the earth life whatever it is that you want to do that's a mormon belief so you can make a um the shame of mormonism if you like i guess but uh god created from nothing he created by his word uh, by his very words he created you should know this, this is genesis 1 2 so or genesis 1 1 or rather um, so okay, all right, all right. so I'm, I'm going to stretch his brain just a little bit. So let's do, go with that. He created. Yes, God created. At that point, brother man, did you hear, did you hear down there storm? At that point, you could have, God could have created animals that got the, all their energy from the sun. Period. That's it. So... Other than that, he's just still talking about the animal thing. Still, no basis for that. There's no basis for that. Right. Because the... All right, so we guys, we, we get it. We get it. We don't have to keep beating that dead horse. Find it back. Exhibit A, the first piece of damning evidence, which I use to justify calling it the evil god monster of Abraham, is book one, chapter one of its own story. Book one, chapter one. Some theists may try to equivocate this point and claim creatures didn't need to eat or kill at this point in the story. Which he did exactly that at the beginning. And then he goes, okay, okay, well, let's say we didn't, they didn't have to. All right, but he did that. You saw him do that. Which makes their argument seem even less plausible. But really, I could let them have that one. Okay, so no animal had to kill to survive when it was all created. But maybe they wanted to argue it wasn't until the fall of man where that changed. And therefore, it's man's fault, not God's fault. Fine. So we literally went through all the animal thing that you spent, like, <laughs> three no. minutes talking about no only to tell us oh well if you hold this perspective okay then that doesn't apply it's um no i was actually acquiescing to your point whenever you said that in the beginning they didn't have to kill each other that's all i was just saying okay brother if that's the case all right so that it does kind of say the rest but it's still just if you hopefully he'll let the rest of the video play because i i don't let me explain i even explained it to him he just i just don't think he's gonna get it you could have just started off with that, uh, saved us three minutes, but um, <laughs> it's, uh, I guess I'm glad to listen to your perspective either way. Um, although I would be amiss if I didn't say that you have no right, you have no right to bring any charge of anything against God. And you stand in a position, um, where to be frank with you, um, that. I just want to say I'm a human being on this planet right now that exists, and therefore I have the right to defend myself against his evil god monster. Do you not agree? Show of hands. <laughs> Good morning, Pavel D. Nice to have you. Uh, I have no right. I know, that's kind of, I have no right, because I don't worship a god. I have no right to make any claims of what's moral or not moral. I, because I don't worship a God, I have no no keel, no no rudder to tell me right from wrong, and I have no right to judge his God. Hmm. 
I wonder what he would say about the gods of the Aztecs or the gods of any of these other people who did they did things was it the Aztecs I think it's the yeah Aztecs the ones that were decapitating people and rolling their heads how, how would he feel about their gods <laughs> God's wrath abides on you present tense and I hope and I will bring just have that. no right you have no right to bring any charge of anything against God. I can, listen, if I can sit over and go, that person is doing something wrong based on what society has taught me is right and wrong as we've already discovered. Why can't I say that about God? And I say that about his God. Why I say that because his God is followed by billions of people. So you really got to hold that God to that kind of standard. That's the, the, they're thinking that's the last person you have to hold to that kind of standard. No, that's the first freaking person you have to hold to that standard. But as I've made my claim before, if you know, if you follow me along and you know what I talk about, this guy's God was written by a bunch of desert people who hated city people, city life, and they had their old superstitions, their old ways, and they oppressed women, and that, that's, that's what they got. And we get the Bible from that. And they try to distance themselves, the Old Testament, New Testament, well, fine, the New Testament. I even had God in my chat giving me the whole, the New Testament, blah, 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 blah. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. I don't really know where he got that from the video we were watching. I'm like, yeah, but if Jesus is God, then that means he unalived babies. That means that God did, or Jesus did all these things that the Bible says God did. And God does a lot of bad stuff. <laughs> In the Old Testament. I'm just saying. You know, there's a reason why they separate themselves from it. You know? And again, as I've said before, as I, I really just, I gotta be honest. Ow, my chair sucks, guys. So pardon me if I hop around. Um, as I've said before, or I just said before in this show, but I really just realized today, Jesus isn't washing away our sins. Jesus is washing away the Old Testament God's sins because before Jesus came he was a mean evil monster after that he's a wonderful loving kind understanding creature that will burn you in a pit of fire for all eternity for the slightest of offenses but still I mean peace and love and mercy right they're like Jesus loves you unconditionally well there are a few conditions <laughs> uh, let me get back onto this guy though let's see what he got to say and you stand in a position um were to be frank with you um that god's wrath abides on you present tense and i hope and i will be praying um that oh don't pray for me don't pray for me it it, it itches it does it it does just don't do it don't do it not to that god monster pray to thor thor pray to thor thor was a good god well yeah. <laughs> subjectively speaking you will not find yourself believing these words that you're uttering at the end of your life i pray and will be praying that you actually hey hey that's that's fantastic mark that you mentioned that uh, let me read what mark says um uh he says salt of the red earth they don't put much stock in the new testament either it's the new new testament they hold so dear thank you for pointing that out in fact this gentleman here whenever he started his uh, response video he talked about how he was looking at it from the reformed christian view <laughs> so yeah same and same i appreciate it isn't that fantastic one of the things i argue listen man if you their god uh, first of all is very for not very forgiving when it comes to doing things wrong it's evil is crouching at your door all the time ready to just drop you straight to hell at every so you go along you live your life you do great you do great you do great and then one day you just kind of slip you know, and have a, I don't know, an affair with a porn star while your wife's at home with your newborn child. And all of a sudden you're going to hell. You know, all of your good wasted if you did good. Anyway, uh, let me catch back up. But Chris, Jesus was also pushing Judaism as his father. You know, Jesus, yeah, Jesus said, I did not come to replace the laws. I came to fulfill the laws or some business like that, you know. Uh, and... It's, it gets calm. It basically, they, they, they manipulate it to say what they want. Anyway, let me let this guy finish. Apparently, he has time to go. I mean, I thought he was about done. But Come to a place of repentance, and you turn to Christ for mercy, the very God you are accusing of evil. 
Why would I have to if he weren't evil? What have I done wrong? I mean, I haven't, I mean, that he knows of. All I'm doing is talking, putting out my deal about his God. I mean, I'm just saying words. That's all I'm doing. I'm just saying words. I'm not hurting nobody. I'm not murder, death, killing nobody. I'm not essaying anybody. So what's his problem? Why, why am I going to have to stand before his? Let me read let, for no other reason than not believing in his God. That's mercy right there, baby. Let's see. Let's see. At the end of your life, in a position, um, he so talks I guess we're glad to listen to your perspective either way. Um, although I would be amiss if I didn't say that you have no right, you have no right to bring any charge of anything against God. And you stand in a position um, where, to be frank with you, um, that God's wrath abides on you, present tense. And I hope, and I will be praying, um, that you will not find yourself believing these words that... Now, I don't know if I'm... I just want to... Can I, can I, can I, can I digress, digress for just a moment here about other things? Earlier we talked about his channel, but this guy here is sitting in a well-lit room. Looks good, doesn't it? Looks good. And he's got two lights at least two sitting in front of him it looks two you can tell by the reflection on his eyes he looks like he's got two lights in his face is that not how it appears he's got some really good lighting that kind of and despite having two bright lights in his face his pupils are really blown out aren't they I mean, I don't know nothing. I don't. I mean, it could be anything. It could be caffeine. Could be anything. I mean, maybe he's got a health issue that he doesn't know about. Because you know, I, I just don't get hard drug user out of this guy. I just don't. It's not. not, <laughs> I'm just, I'm not I don't get that from him. <laughs> and he's certainly not on speed. <laughs> <laughs> there is no speed going on in this man, Michelangelo. Thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, uh, so I'm just kind of curious. I, as, as I watched it the first time, I noticed that too, that his, his pupils are really just blown out despite having these big, well, they're not, they're not big lights, but they are, I mean, he's got studio lights in front of him or some kind of lights in front of him. Anyway, so I hope he's okay, you know, make sure he's not stroking out or anything. Pray, pray, brother. <laughs> All right, so let me go here. Let him continue to us. That you're uttering at the end of your life. I pray and will be praying that you actually come to a place of repentance and you turn to Christ for mercy, the very God you are accusing of evil. Why would, again, why would I need to, to ask him for mercy? What have I done wrong? Outside of not believing in him or speaking, I mean, did I touch myself? Not today that you know of. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what, what's, what's, what do I have to microdosing? You know, I, I, I would like to think so. I don't know. I'd like, I don't know, man. I, it's hard to judge. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say he just doesn't come off as a person who would do something like that. Um, but who knows? Maybe he would, maybe he could. I don't, I would like to think he would open his mind and he would turn away. He, he, really, to be honest, when I first watched the first half of this video, my thought was that I could deconvert this guy. Really, I mean, because look at what his things, everything he says about my, um, my evaluation of the text um, is exactly what his interpretation of the text is. I, I don't misinterpret it. I just pop it out and read it like that. Now, the killing and eating your animals, and I even admit, you know, it doesn't say that specifically there. And if it doesn't, then blah. But with his, it, it doesn't say that. He has to really go through and pick out where the good parts are. And he doesn't see that. He says, that's me. And especially if he watches any more videos, you know, um, he'll see <laughs> in the series. I hope he's watched more than just this one. This is uh, the, well, the first video I made. And um, I have more hair. Thank you, Finasteride and Dutasteride. Um, you know what I mean? So... Uh, -dum -pum -pum -pum. I don't think he smokes or vapes all the time either. The only reason why I say that is because <clears throat> people who tend to smoke and vape, <clears throat> they do that all the time. It'll be just a little while. So somebody who, <clears throat> who vapes all the time, yes, I mean, if they're a regular <clears throat> vapor, they'll do that <clears throat> all the time. No offense to anybody out there who's a regular vapor. I did it for a while. 
<clears throat> I don't vape. I smoke weed. <laughs> I don't vape. Um, I thought I saw someone make a comment. Bur bear with me. I was I was kind of wrapped up. Somebody made a comment. Uh, to end Islam and the war, you have to ask for proof that the Quran was memorized. Trust me. Emergency. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. You know, I'm the. Uh, yeah. There's a lot going on there with the uh, Islam and stuff. It's interesting. We we conversation about that. Yep. Yes. Let's see here. Later, philosophical gamer. Have a great day. Thank you for enjoying our craziness today with us. Enjoy school. Learn stuff. Go get smart. Hooked on a book. All right, let's see what this guy here has to say. Let's rewind it a bit. And then Where that changed. And therefore, it's man's fault, not God's fault. Fine, done. Now, going on that premise, it's still the work of an evil God monster. But now he's even more cruel than we thought before because now the creatures God has said are under man's domain have to kill and consume the flesh of each other to live because man did something wrong. One man and one woman, in fact. All the other creatures of the earth for all time have to suffer horror. All the other creatures had to suffer. They did nothing wrong that we know of that the text reveals. They did nothing wrong. They have to suffer these horrible murder, death, kill deaths. And yet he doesn't see that as bad. Horrible deaths to feed each other or horrible. Yeah, horrible deaths to feed each other and or have to kill each other to survive. Really? That's not the creation I would think would be born of a peaceful, loving God. Quite the opposite. Okay, so there we get to it, right? The last words he said. This is not what I think. Of course, would be what did the you creation think it was about? of a loving and good God? Yeah, that, that's all you have is your own opinion. You My don't have a basis opinion and evaluation of the book. Um, <laughs> or Man, all right. So he opens by saying, "I really have to struggle to find. I hate God." Do you remember if you were here and you watched it beginning? He opens with the fact that he thinks I hate God. You know. And then he talks about how I have to really look to find the ugly in the Bible. But here he is having to listen to everything I say and then really find struggle to find the good in the Bible. It's it's the he's total Christian projection that we see in conservative right. Trump, Trump, I bet he's a Trump fan. Let me just go here. Go back. Go back. Back fan. Come on, man. Or a moral. I think would be yeah. the creation of a loving and good God. That That's all you have. That's yeah, well, the whole thing. Is your own opinion. You don't have a basis to make this a moral claim um, or a moral argument. Nothing at all. But I'm glad you clarified it. Because he says I don't have the right. Am I right? The, I mean, so this gentleman here says I don't have the right. He has proclaimed it thus. And therefore, I do not. Is that, is that what's happening? That seems like that's what's happening. Uh, let's see what's going on. There we go. It, -um -bum -bum -bum. It's just your own opinion. Um, yeah, that's, that, that's indeed it. That's the whole series. <laughs> my, into, my opinion is I interpret the Bible for you as a the, the perspective of somebody who's picking up the Bible. Yeah, you read that at the you saw that at the beginning of the, the, the video. <laughs> So it bears no weight. It bears no weight to anybody except to you. Uh, so I'm, if you want to actually reach people, again, make at least an attempt. I know you won't be able to do it. I know you cannot do it. Many an atheist has tried, okay? No atheist can make a moral uh, justification for their claim. Um, so now, I, first of all, whenever, whenever I first saw this video, rather than me going coming up with my own things, reasons as to why examples which i clearly went through earlier as to why atheists can have their own moral come up with their own morals i i originally went started to go find um sam um harris he's got a really good speech he did where he talks about you know knowing what's objectively good and what's objectively bad if pain eternal pain all over your body and that is like fire burning all of you we will call that bad Okay, it's over here. We can determine that's bad. Objectively, we can all determine that's bad. And then over here on the right, you've got like, you know, in a, the best of comfort, total orgasmic body. We can tell that's good. And everything we do is somewhere between those points. And we can objectively go, yeah, that's good or bad. You know, that's, you know, we don't need, we don't need a God to tell us that. <laughs> um, and, and he just does a really good job. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to say Nolly. 
Nal. I think it's Nal Ahmad. Uh, good morning. Uh, I, I, th- I think I do remember you. I hope I'm saying you're wrong. Um, nice to see it. Nice to have you here today again as we talk about these particular things. Thank you for joining us. Why the people? It has weight for the love of all that is holy. Yes. Yes. Yes, it does. There we go. All right. So let me go back to this gentleman here. But it would it would be interesting to see you try it. Um, he should watch the rest other of the than videos. That, not much else to say except back to the animal thing. Um, back to the animal thing. Yeah. You know, it's unfortunate that death came into the world through one man, Adam, as Romans 5 tells us. But, but here's the thing, as Romans 5. Here's the thing, though. God set that meter. He's the one that said, when man broke that rule, what happened? When that one man broke that rule, God, this good, loving creature, he could have been merciful. Was he merciful, people? Was he merciful? No, there was no mercy. The man broke the rule, according to this guy, and bam, animals had to die all over the world. No mercy. That's freaking hideous. It's like that God was just sitting there waiting for them to do something wrong. They didn't know right from wrong, or if they did, they just figured it out because of the apple. And now they have the knowledge for good and evil. Right? <laughs> Let me see here. Uh, any questions in chat? Just wanted to remind you all about Islam. Yeah, yeah, we we, 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 we do. Part of the deal, I, I do appreciate my Islamic viewers over there. Though. Thank you to Phil uh, Lister for getting us on those Facebook groups. We do. Um, and I would appreciate if you would understand, and I'm, I totally dig it. One of these days, we'll do just totally straight Islam. As a matter of fact, bring comment content or topics up in the chat, you know, that you want to talk about, about Islam. But this book we're talking about is Islam. This God that I am studying in this book that I'm going through chapter by chapter, that is the God of Islam. Same God. Just thought, so it does help. I mean, I don't really put that in there because, again, it's more about Christianity here where we are. But, you know, it's the same God. They're all the same God. Um, <laughs> unless they kill each other. Let me just catch up on the chat. Give me something to work with. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, I, I'm not sure. which. Okay, cool. You guys continue on with your uh, Islam discussion there in the chat. Be nice. Be sweet. Don't threaten people. Um Avoid the name calling as much as you can. I'm kind of bad about it, so I can't really throw any stones there in that department. Yes, I used a Bible reference. All right, fish fossils found on the top of Everest. Are you? That's not proof of Islam, or that's proof of plate tectonics science. We got science for that, brother. We guys all men are science for that. We know why that's there. If it's there, I'm not really sure that they found that there. But if they did, they did find fossils on tops of mountains. We know exactly why that's there. Yeah, because that, that stuff kind of goes up and down over billions of years and stuff like that. So that's no mystery. I mean, if I, hope, oh, I really hope you got better than that. You know, I got confidence in you, Ahmad. You got better than that. You can do me better. Because the whole, our science clearly goes over. And here's the magic. Here's the magic about our science, Ahmad. Let me go up here. You, you can actually go and go to school. And learn the basics of the science and get advanced degrees and understand why they say what they say. And you can go see the record in the soil and understand the processes by which those fossils got where they were. You don't need Allah for that. Um, now, Allah did, however. No, it doesn't. Sorry, it doesn't. It really doesn't. I just told you it doesn't. I just explained how those fossils got there. <laughs> uh, not through Noah's Ark. And also, by the way, sir, if it was by Noah's Ark, all those fossils, because, you know, they, I agree, there are fossils on different mountaintops, blah, 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 and for different reasons. They, some of them can be on the other side, like those that mountain range was together and dinosaurs died there, and then they moved across the way, and now there's dinosaurs on both sides. That, that happens, you know. But as far as the whole global flood, there is zero evidence of a global flood. I mean, there's floods. Floods happen. They happen all the time. Their flood happened in Florida, in North Carolina. If you were a, a just a, like anybody before, say, 1900, and were just living in North Carolina and didn't know what was going on, you'd have just thought it was a huge flood. You know what I mean? These kind of things. So, um, 
formed over six. How could it suddenly be over two thousand years? See, I don't. That's the whole thing, man. Your your science. I, I just don't think your your science is right. And that's why I say there's ways of going and finding out. I'm just telling you this uh, that this notion that Noah's Ark and it's ridiculous anyway to think that they could have gotten every two. All right, so really it's seven seven pairs of every clean animal and two pairs of every unclean animal and all the food that supports them. How big would that boat be, brother? Where would they get them all? Come on, man, use your mind. Use your reason, Leonidas. Use your reason. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Uh, Aaron Ra is an entire series. Yeah, I bet he does. Aaron Ra, you know, you know, let me show you guys this. You'll see this. This is Aaron Ra and him and his damn fake fossil hunt. Let me go here. Boom, ba -dum, bum, 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 ba -dum. Hello all, Chris Mallard here, atheist extraordinaire, host of the Daily Atheist Morning Show, and currently burning in hell. Oh, don't worry about me, I'm not dead. I'm just down here for the annual Christmas party. Ow, 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 ow. I mean, I mean, annual solstice awards party. The Dark One, or Lucy as he is affectionately known, is personally handing out the awards. Aaron Ra is getting the award for the most souls brought down by evolution for his African fossil hunt, and Matt Dillahunty has won the Golden Phallus Award for being a dick to the most Christians. Oh wait, it's the Golden Fallacy Award for the confusing the most Christians. Easy mistake to make. To top it off, Seth Andrews has lent his voice to the Gregarian chants this year. It's delightfully hellish. Gotta run. I hope you all had a happy Thanksgiving, if you're into that sort of thing, and I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Ow, 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 ow. I mean, a, a happy holidays, happy solstice, and a happy new year. Stay safe, heathens. Party hard, fornicate, that sort of thing. But do it safely. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so, yeah. Aaron Ron is fossil, huh? He's just trying to mislead them. You know how it is. Uh, let me catch up here. How old? Yeah, that's a good question. Just depends on what, I mean, the, these weird science that people throw out is just, you know, what were, was it you, Akbad, who was talking about you believe in the Noah's Ark because there's a rock formation over in Turkey that actually has a visitor center where you can go see it. And because of that, not that you've ever been there, but you've seen it on the internet, that's what you, makes you believe. Are you that guy or is that somebody else? Am I remembering right? Atheist comedy, The Great Flood by Dark Matter. You know, I don't doubt it. I love me some dark matter. That's good stuff. That's what I've thought about doing. I've thought about starting. And what do you guys think? Think I could pull it off? Now, most of you haven't seen me. It would be really funny. But I've thought about starting doing atheist comedy. Yeah. Starting my own atheist comedy. Specifically, like atheist stand-up comedy. Yeah. Because I got religious funny stuff. But then they'd just kill me. And I would be dead. <laughs> like, funny man, you think you're funny? Stab, 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 stab. Chop, 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 chop. <laughs> I'd be like, yes, I'm hilarious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, wow, really? A whole, a whole thousand people? You, you know, it's wonderful. Thank you all very much for, for watching. Appreciate you all. That's fantastic. Y'all need to subscribe so you catch more of our craziness. That's fantastic. Uh, I, I want to reiterate for those people who are catching up with the show, I'm going to go back to our, our guy here who's been just trashing me and really showing me, <laughs> demonstrating to me how the error of my ways. Uh, I just want to mention that I uh, the Daily Atheist Morning Show, me and the amazing Super Chris, it's pretty much a one-man band. You know, I do it all. I do it all. I am going to be joining up with, uh, with the... Um, Skeptic Haven. I want to be broadcasting on their stream, and I'm going to be helping. Uh, I'm going to be hosting shows with them, and I'm going to be helping them do other stuff. And they're going to be, you know, so Skeptic Haven and the Daily Atheist Morning Show are kind of coming together as a, as a, as an awesome team group thing. But really, I'm just me. And it's them as they. There's a lot of them. I was surprised by how many of them there are. A lot of really awesome people. But so you know, guys, you you know you'll be able to watch the stream here. I'm gonna looks like if we can get our ducks in a row, we'll be streaming the Daily Atheist Morning Show over on the Skeptic Haven channel. So that's awesome sauce, awesome sauce. Um, let me catch up here. Thanks, sub. Thank you very much. You know, I, I'm a Star Trek fan, and I don't hear. I'll share this with you guys. Okay, look at this, my friends. Here we go. So 
I was I was getting close to 1,701 subscribers, and it was it was like 1,699 when I woke up this morning. And I wanted because I'm such a Star Trek fan, I wanted to actually get a snapshot of the 1,701. Do not unsubscribe for that. No, nobody unsubscribe. <laughs> Uh, but I missed it. I'm a big Star Trek fan. Anyway, so things are going good. Yeah. You know, look at this. Matter of fact, while we're here in the last, I just started the show up a month ago. And in the month that I've started this show, you can see that I have grown the channel by 300 subscribers, 31,000 views, my friends. Thank you very much. And you're like, wow, is that a lot? Well, let's see. Let me just show you real quick. Anybody who's new, and we won't bash on this very long. we got Christian religion stuff to talk about. But let me just show you here. This is the lifetime of the channel. Four years ago, I hosted the same Daily Atheist Morning Show that I'm hosting right now. This is the entire length of the year that I hosted that show. And this is the last month. So it's real. The channel has really been kicking names and taking ass. Um, so, yes, that's awesome. Let me go back to the other stuff that you Let's go back to this guy here, though. Let's get him talking. Let him finish his, his thing. That he was our federal head. Good morning, Jeremiah. Nice to have you with us this morning. And that sin doesn't just affect animals. It doesn't just affect man. Sin affects everything. The reasons that we have. Why though? Why does sin? What what sins do animals do? Why well, we judge them by their sin? Do animals get into heaven? If they don't get into heaven, what's a sin to animal? Do they go to hell? Right. Well, I mean, where? How far do you carry this crazy? You know. At what point do you go? Mm, you know. <laughs> I'm just kind of making this shit up as I go along. Atheists, at least we go, you know, I don't know. This is a bunch of shit as far as I know. It's all a bunch of shit. <laughs> That's all I got. But but these guys here, they make it up. And it wouldn't be so bad, but they legislate based on their beliefs. They hurt other people based on their beliefs. Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, right? So they hurt other people based on this book and these beliefs. So is that morally good or bad? Can I, as an atheist, not see and not be able to judge this as being morally good or bad because I don't believe in his God, which is stupid to say. It feels just oh, coming out of my mouth. It does not sound. It just, let me let him go. Though. I, oh, shut up, Chris. Uh, go. Natural disasters, even. From hurricanes to vol uh, earthquakes to volcanic eruptions, all of these are a... Uh, product of the fall these this is sin entering into the world and stretching to every part of the world and so yeah nobody likes that that now death has to exist that now even diseases exist sicknesses uh viruses all these things have now come um are able to be uh formed into the kind of viruses or bacteria or whatever it is that they are is because of the fall so there's no no question about that i would agree with you that it's that we don't like death but hmm, i would agree with you and then he, he almost went there he almost went there yeah <laughs> but this is god accomplishing his will he is glorifying himself but the, but the point is, what if this God isn't real and we're just looking at the text written by a bunch of people who lived 2,000 years or 4,000 years ago in the freaking desert? And they, they had diseases and they were angry and they were sick and they were stressed out and they were pissed off at the people who lived in the cities because they were doing I mean, right? What if? Just pretend. Stretch your mind and imagine, because that's how it reads, right? But just stretch your mind and try to imagine, right? And to think that we have no moral compass or god i mean from the beginning from before creation I, I just want to point out before we go too much further my name is not chris mallard mm -mm. no that's a fake name i created whenever i decided i wanted to um uh, speak out against christianity because they're they're violent and they're i wanted to protect my family from these people is that a, does anybody in the audience think that's an unrealistic thing that I would, why would anybody think that based on the history of religion, the violence created by these people? <laughs> he chose to create and not only to create, but to enter into that creation and die for the sins of a particular people to show 
the to demonstrate the range of his glory to demonstrate his mercy as ephesians 1 tells us to um uh, that we're vessels of mercy romans 9 ephesians 1 he just he we're expressions of his mercy grateful great grateful recipients of his mercy that which we were ill deserving of and his wrath on those who would disobey the gospel that would um cast away and treat as so now he's going to talk about the wrath and go and describe i think i haven't seen this before we're seeing this together but he's going to describe the wrath of his the wrath of the evil god monster that i have made it out to be he's going to go describe that wrath for us now his mercy grateful great grateful recipients of his mercy that which we were ill deserving of and his wrath on those who would disobey the gospel that would um, cast away and treat as worthless the blood of the son of god that those such people will enter into his wrath if they die in that state and god today's monday trash day hey sadie come here come here come here Come here, she got up. I want to show you guys the old girl. This is our camera operator. This is part of my technical staff. This is Sadie Lady, for those of you who are new. Oh my goodness. I didn't see why I didn't want to bug her. She's like an old girl. She was down there sleeping. You can hear her. Sadie girl. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my goodness. Okay, so yes, this is one of my members of my staff. Feel free to purchase them a pup cup. There's a little link down there if you want to throw a pup cup at my dogs. Um, we do occasionally really give them the little pup cups, but not as often as you might think, only because, you know, it's bad for their teeth. Yeah, we love our dogs. But yeah, hook up our dogs. Dogs are the best. Yeah, she's our, she was our first. We, we bought her from a breeder in California. When me and my wife first got together, we didn't know anything about dogs. You know, outside of, you know, just we've had dogs before, but, you know, we got her from a breeder. They flew her on an airplane and it was a horrible experience for her. She showed up covering her own urine and all that stuff is horrible. And I was there and I saved her and rescued her. And she loves me a long time. That's my puppy dog. Um, Daisy in there. That's what she's our sound engineer. <laughs> she barked. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so that's my puppy dogs. Uh, let me catch up what we're going on here. Let me go back. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another thing right here, and I'm going to refill my coffee real quick, guys. Let me give you one of these. Let's go here to... Is it going to work? Are you feeling the world is leaving you behind? Do you look at all the pseudoscience, rumors, and wild speculation on the internet and wonder, why can't I do that? Well, friend, you can. We can help you. We are Conspirawin. Conspirawin has a long history of helping anyone with a hidden truth. We will get your message out. The conspiracy theories you see today all started out with one person's vision. The moon landing hoax was launched by a NASA engineer whose manager didn't okay his vacation request. Conspirawin was there to help out. Christianity started out because one little girl named Mary got pregnant out of wedlock and Conspirawin saved the day. Now the virgin birth is accepted Catholic doctrine. You may be thinking, but my idea of the center of the earth being made of ice is far-fetched. No one's going to believe that. In a world where people believe windmills cause cancer, we say no dream is too big. Conspirawin will take your fledgling idea and feed it to our YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok operatives. And these savvy social media professionals will raise doubts with the prevailing scientific consensus. They will say no one has ever seen the planet's core except Jesus. And science is wrong all the time. That's why science has theories and not Jesus. Within 30 days, we guarantee you CNN will run a story on how your conspiracy theory isn't true. We will also give you 100% assurance Fox News will say your crazy idea about the Earth's core being an icy ball is true. Follow your heart. Listen to the voices no one else can hear. Team up with Conspirawin. All right, here is Ollie. He is our newest member of our team. He is an engineer. He's the engineer, takes care of the computers and all that stuff, making sure the streams get set up right. He does a really good job most of the time. Um, he is a rescue. We uh, He was the puppy of a, 
uh, a vet, a homeless veteran, and the veteran needed medical attention and he couldn't take the puppy where he was going. And uh, so my wife and I adopted him and gave him a good home. And so his name is Ollie. He's a, he's an Ori. If you're familiar with Ori in the blind forest, that's what he is. He's one of those. And he's very sleepy right now. And somebody up, Bailey, come here. I'll show you guys. I, I, I'll get back on the atheist. I'll come here, baby. I want to show you guys Bailey while she's here. Cause we don't get to see Bailey very often. Come here, baby. Come here. Come here. Oh my goodness gracious. <sighs> There's Bailey. There's my Bailey bear. She doesn't get on the camera very much. She likes kissing Papa. Hold on a second. Kiss me over here. And kiss me over here. Good puppy. Oh my goodness. She just, I don't let her kiss me on the face, face, face. Best she gets is the ears, but she'll kiss you. If you get anywhere close to her, she'll ah, stick her tongue right down your throat all the way. She goes for tonsils. That's a tonsil tickler out there. She's a good puppy. She's good. All right. So that's my tech team. She is the scripty. She writes, takes care of the scripts. So, um, that's all of them but Jack. You guys got to see all of them and Jack. Jack's our PTSD dog. I, I'd even have a hard time catching him to show you. Um, yes, Ori in the Will of the Wisp. Exactly right. He's an Ori. Just happened to catch him one day. So let's go back over here. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. he does kind of look like a miniature Falcor, doesn't he? You know, he looked a lot cuter when we first got him, kind of, because... And then we got his hair cut and, you know, because, well, when we first got him, he's all matted up and looked really rough because he's been living on the streets with a homeless veteran. When we took him down, they did a good job cutting him up. And then after, you know, cutting his, he looked like a, like a multi poo. And then he started getting kind of long and was like, you know what? I'll do it. Let me save that $50. And I went in there and bzzz. <laughs> that poor creature. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see here what we got. Anyone 1,400 years ago or below? Uh, yeah, you guys are taking care of that. You know, I appreciate that. The chat is getting kind of the point to where it's hard for me to keep up and the, you guys defend and take care of things. I appreciate that the Islam, Islamic believers and stuff are finally starting to show up and do a little debating with our, our atheists in the chat. So here we go back to this guy. And we'll let him finish up his business. God's power and God's justice and his wrath will be demonstrated in them and his goodness and, uh, mercy on the vessels of mercy that he prepared beforehand for glory well, yeah horrible deaths to feed each other and or to have to kill each other to survive really that's not the creation i would think would be born of a peaceful loving god quite the opposite in fact that sounds like a world created by someone who enjoys pain and suffering and death exactly the type of world the evil god monster would create although i will continue to go through the bible to continue to exemplify my point this alone i feel is enough when look when looked at in the proper perspective I gotta admit, compared to all the rest of the episodes, this one is really kind of a stretch. It was really kind of hard to find the, you know, this is evil part about it, you know. And even then, does God make them eat each other at the beginning? It just depends on whose interpretation you get. This is probably the weakest episode in the entire thing. The rest of them, I'd really enjoy to see his views on them. If he could speed up or something. Perspective, this clearly justifies why I call it the evil God monster of Abraham. Why you call it? Because sure. it's what you think that that's not objective that's just subjective that there's no reason to even consider what you're saying um because again you haven't grounded any of these things in a way as to make it meaningful rather than your own opinion um god's creation was good god's goodness was demonstrated in his creation in the garden of eden in really peacefulness that man He's got to watch the other episodes, man. This guy, he's not watching the other episode. I haven't seen any more videos. Maybe he hasn't made any yet. Hold on. And, and create, he's almost uh, the other creatures. I really think that as he's talking here, like earlier, it looked like he was praying. I really think he may have been. And I really think here, like as he's closing his eyes and thinking, I think he's like calling upon the Holy Spirit or some business in his brain. Check it out. Right? Am I wrong, guys? Is that, Maybe it's just me. To even consider what you're saying. Um, because again, you haven't grounded any of these things in a way as to make it meaningful rather than your own opinion. Um, God's creation was good. God's goodness was goes. demonstrated Look at him. in his creation in the garden of Eden, God's goodness. in the peacefulness goes. that man and create, uh, the other creatures had in the harmony of creation. <laughs> In the harmony and of God's creation. goodness and relationship and fellowship. He really needs to watch the next video. With his 
creation, those who he made in his very own image. The act of creation is a beautiful thing and is a is just a demonstration of God's goodness. He didn't have to create anything. He didn't have to. And yet he chose to. He chose to, and he didn't have to create anything that had to kill each other and die, but he chose to. And then he decided to blame that on an innocent man, on a man who knew better or, or didn't know better, didn't know the ramifications or repercussions of what he would do later on everybody else. Do you really think he would have done? I mean, I know this is all metaphor. We all know this is a metaphor, but it's their metaphor. Right. And and I should really kind of I could go back through and kind of pick out every time he says the word I, I think, or whatever, because that's what he's doing. He's I mean, that's the whole premise of the video is I am showing my opinion. Um, and when I say objectively, I mean, objective, not within their realm of influence, objectively, not Christian, not a Christian viewpoint. Right. I mean, where's the hard thing to believe in? that? I think I just speak too fast. He probably knew. And he chose to make us recipients of his goodness and his mercy. Really? That sounds like an awfully good God. It does an not. amazing God whose love. Not One of us really had to pick through that chapter to find the good loving mercy of it. Especially once I pointed out the obvious, oh, hey, wait. But hey. Neither of us. Between you, me, or anybody watching, we will never comprehend the fullness of God's love until eternity um so with that i think he's done he just i think shills my channel talks yeah, about yeah. Um, subscribing to his channel or the normal something yeah. that happens to you i don't know um, but thank you guys for joining in um here's a few of my other videos uh that you guys can check out if you like i will see you guys in the next one i hope this video is edifying to you let me know what your thoughts are down below let me know what you think and if any of uh these things that he said have hold any weight for you uh, so yeah thanks guys bye <laughs> yeah. if god exists he is perfectly good this is the position i'm gonna have to watch this i'm gonna leave that up there and i'll rewatch that one because that's good stuff so yeah that was i got burned i was burned man i tell you i was really i felt the pain i felt i had to put some aloe on after his <sighs> soft ball softball attempted analyzing my video i think he did a very bad job um because his arguments are that i didn't have any arguments it is just my opinion and that was that was what the whole video was about that's what most of us are doing that's literally what he is doing is showing us that his opinion about my opinion so i mean that's that's all he got you know that's all he's got you know i see i kind of briefly keep looking up and i see the uh the comments about Islam and miracles. There's a lot of, and, and I don't really study Islam a lot, but I'm basically familiar with it. And there are a lot, a lot of instances where Muslims take modern scientific um, things and try to jam, you know, Muhammad in there, science in there, claim that they got, but it's not, it's none of that. It's, I don't believe none of that. I mean, if you're talking about, God was so obvious about putting his mark on science and stuff. Now, I'm not saying that Islamic scholars didn't create certain sciences. I'm not saying that. But you're making claims about God that is just kind of, mm, you know, or about Allah that is just like so Allah did things. Muhammad claimed that he split the moon in half to show off. Where's the evidence of that? There's no evidence of that. It's ridiculous. We could see it. He claimed they could see it from the, from the, from the ground. You know, he also claimed he could fly. His horse could fly. And he flew up to the moon on a horse or something business like that. You know, I mean, there's, yeah, there's no evidence. And there's a lot of this whole thing. I've got a video on it. I'll, I'll ponder about which one it is. Um, what they try to do throughout the video is just jam Jesus back into the Old Testament. They're like, you know, Jesus said he was the light. Now let's go back to the Old Testament. Oh, they mentioned the word light here. And they mentioned the word light here. And they mentioned the word light here. And everywhere they mentioned the word light. That's what Jesus is. The light in the toilet shining up at the bidet was Jesus. It didn't matter. You know what I mean? Of course, I'm being facetious. But every example of light in the Old Testament, they start to mean, that must mean Jesus because Jesus said he was the light. It's crap. They're just trying to shoehorn their thing in. Same thing with science and Islam.
There are a lot of things that, again, Islamic scholars did do good things intellectually. I'm not saying they didn't. But the notion that Muhammad or Allah talked about science in this scripture, about things that we didn't learn until like later on, germ theory, stuff like that, that's just kind of all nonsense. You're welcome to keep talking about it. I'm just saying. I don't I don't believe it at all. No, no video about something. I got... That's the whole thing. You're going to post one little video going, oh, look at this. This is the deal. Let me see. It's something about embryonic things. So you're going to post an embryonic thing about something that somebody who believes what you believe put out there. And now, so you believe that and you're going to put out there as your one piece of evidence and ignore all the other billions of pieces of evidence that are in museums all around this world. Just ignore that. And all the scientific consensus and millions of scientists, educated people who've studied these things. And say that these are the reasons, like your whole notion about Noah's Ark and the flood, the, the, the flood being the reason for the fossils on Mount Everest. Wrong, brother. Wrong. And science, science tells us that. But you're going to refer us to a scientific article that somehow proves your argument? How, how does that work? How, how do you, why do you believe that scientific article? Because it bolsters whatever you believe. Am I right? Or am I right? Or am I right? <sighs> so, yeah. And if you want to see something about errors in the Bible, let's play a little game. You guys want to play a little game for just a second? I'm going to think about doing a series of videos on this. Peep this, my homie. Let's go back over here. I'm going to leave him up so I can watch this stuff after this. Let's check this out. Let's go here to bibviz.org. Okay, this is where I'm going, bibviz.org. And let's look at the Bible. Now, remember, friend, the Old Testament is the original book of the Bible. And Islam is the same God. They believe in the same God. It's the same God. The, the, the Old Testament is book one. Um, the New Testament is book two. And um, the the... Islamic text, the Quran is book three. Okay? It's book three in the series. It's a series. That's part of the reason why Muhammad says, I am the last prophet. No other prophet will come after me, right? Because he knew that was like a series. Like he didn't want anybody to change his words after this. Like they had done with Jesus, like they had done with Moses. You know, I mean, come on, dude. Moon splitting. They split the moon. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. All right, let me share this website with you guys because, you know, not that you care. This is going to hurt your brain. This is a website called bibviz.org, and these are all contradictions in the Bible. Every one of these is a contradiction. It's a Bible, bi biblical contradiction. Every one of them. Welcome to go look it up, bibviz.org. Let me see if I can put it in here for the people in the chat, bibviz.org. So if you're looking for, like, ammo, if you're a, a believer or... A non-believer who, uh, if you're a non-believer who, you know, you, the believers say the Bible is all this and Bible here, go look, go look at what the Bible says. These things down here point out uh, the, what, what the chapter, the Bible and verse. So if you get down to the red, into the red line, you see this, these, all these contradictions from that one line generate all those different contradictions. What kind of crazy nonsense is that? It's almost like it was written by a whole bunch of different authors at different times who didn't know really what the other ones were really writing. You know what I mean? It is not the word of a single unified God. Clearly not the word. If it were, it would be super easy to understand. Everybody would understand it. You know? That's fair. And then you, this page goes down. There's scientific absurdities and historical inaccuracies. That one might... Uh, burn a little, Ahmed, if you go to that part. Here's cruelty and violence. If you don't believe about the cruelty and violence, here's misogyny and violence and discrimination against women. Tells you all the little places you can find it. Look at all those scriptures. Goodness gracious. Look at all those, all that hate in this Bible or in this book. You know, look at all that hate. Uh-huh. Interesting. Very interesting. Very Interest, lots of hate in that book of love by a peaceful, forgiving God. I got carried away. Let me catch up with the chat. Forgot about, yeah, bibviz.org is fantastic. 
Uh, fifth time, please tell me how an illiterate man in the Arabia 1,400 years ago could have known the whole process of Im He didn't. That's stupid. And uh, how could he have written the Bible, or uh, how could he have written the book if he was illiterate? Did, did Muhammad write it, or did other people write it? If he was illiterate and he couldn't read, how do we know that the people who wrote down the words wrote down what he wanted? Because he couldn't read to tell you back what it was. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you're really stretching, brother. We believe the Bible and the Torah have been corrupted. Have been corrupted, yes, but not your book. The prophecies had the same God at that time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, same God. It's vicious. It, again, it's, it's not vicious. I don't believe in it. I don't hate it. I don't, none of that stuff. It's written by people who didn't know any better. By, by, how do you put it? I want to say desert dwellers that's not an insult really and i'm not trying to insult them i'm just trying to give you an idea of who wrote this thing pete you're allah you're muhammad i mean did did the angel really come down and tell Muhammad? is that what happened an angel read it out hmm i ain't buying it Yeah, you believe the Quran is preserved, the Bible and Torah are corrupted according to Islam and atheists. Well, according to atheists, so is the Quran. Dude, I could tell you. And normally we don't talk about the Quran, you know? The Quran, though, is the one that tells you to cut off the heads and the fingertips of the of the infidels. Is that right? Yeah? No, no. I, I'm saying a lot of different random men. No, yeah, I do deny the miracles in the book. What miracles? Tell me about some miracles. Moses splitting the water. You think that really? You think that really happened? Please tell me you don't think that really happened. Please don't tell me you really think. Let me implore you. <laughs> Look into my my baby greens. Please don't tell me you think Noah's Ark is real. I mean, but that is kind of how you came into the whole thing, arguing about Noah's Ark being real. So, if Noah's Ark is real. And the Old Testament is corrupted based on what you said. So you're arguing for a story and saying it's real on a book that you claim is corrupted. Let me ask you, do you have to say blessings be upon him? What happens if you don't? Does, does Allah strike you down if you don't say blessings be upon him? Or what is the reason? I know, I know why you do it to honorific, but... What happens if you don't do it? Is there a reason for for doing it all the time? Are you ashamed that God will see it if you didn't put it in there? Allah, I'm sorry, apologies, apologies. Do you believe Allah will see that you didn't put the blessings be upon him in there? I wonder, do you think God is sitting up here? I mean, he's vicious, dude. He does not forgive, even by your own standard. Do you think that maybe he's not going to forgive you for putting the B-P-U-H? I mean, do you not love him enough to write it out every time? I would be worried, man. I'd be like, damn, whenever you die, you're going to get up there and God, your God, especially, he's, look, uh-oh, you did it again, B-P-U-H. Instead of saying blessings be upon him or prayers being upon him or whatever, you, you, I mean, you didn't spell it out. That's going to burn, dude. You're going to burn. <laughs> The Quran depends on the Bible, but they say it's corrupt. Yeah, they say that, but but Islam, Quran, you know, we could go all day long about the uh, the the Surah. Is it the Surah? Uh, chapter nine. We can go into the chapter nine. The, the the I guess it's the bloodiest book of the of the Quran. But normally, I don't really. Again, we don't really do the Quran a lot here, so you'll have to bear with me as I get a little caught up. Uh, because we do have obviously Muslim viewers now watching more of the show. And it's interesting. It, it's kind of flexing a muscle I didn't know I needed. Or, yeah, wouldn't plan on needing anytime soon. Yeah, every time we play, we say the most gracious, ever merciful. Right. So, so he's not ever merciful. He's not most gracious. He's quite vicious, even by your standards. His followers are vicious. Am I wrong? Uh, what happened to Salman Rusty, and who did that, and for what? Did you hear about the uh, the professor over in was it France, who was unalived by a Muslim student and had his cabeza removed from him? Hmm? 
His mercy encompasses his anger. Really? That, I mean, just kind of. Well, all right. So Allah, uh, let me see if I, I don't know if I'm going to say this right. Allah Bakum. Thank you for pointing that out. Allah says, I'm going to say, just call you Bakum, right? Just for clarity. Says, this is how you prove yourself stupid and ignorant. You are talking about something you didn't study or have research about, and you think you make yourself clear. I want to say thank you for stating that. I don't normally study Islam. That's true. Normally, this show covers Christians and Christianity, and that's what we talk about. And I'm fairly well versed in that. Today, or recently, we have been, our show has been, been shared to Islamic channels on Facebook, Muslim channels, or, or whichever you want to put it. And so I've had people coming in and asking me and wanting to debate Islam. And I'm just doing the best I can. Pointing out the ugliness of the text. Now, I noticed the very first thing you did, Bakum, was go personally at me, attack me personally. Here you go. This is how you prove yourself stupid and ignorant. Well, I'm here to show you who's stupid and ignorant. Have you read the book? I mean, your book is just full of blood. It's bloody. It's horrific. The examples set by its followers, horrific and bloody. We don't normally talk about that on this show because it's called Islamophobia. Why would there be such a thing as a First of all, if you're new to the English language, a phobia means that you have an unrealistic fear of something. Not that you're afraid of something. For example, let me show you this. This is a lighter. I, I, I'm not afraid of a lighter. I, it can burn me, but some people, for example, maybe this was a snake. Lighter's a bad example. Say it was a snake. Some people have a phobia of snakes. And even though the snake is on the TV, for example, and can't hurt them, they're still scared and they have to leave the room when they see that because it's an unrealistic fear. Okay. <coughs> Islamophobia, <coughs> Islamophobia does not exist because there is a real reason to be afraid of Islam. It's not a phobia. It's not an unrealistic fear. I don't unrealistically believe that Muslims would unalive me given the opportunity. What would happen to me, my friends? Let me ask you, what would happen to me if I were to walk down the street in um, Mecca wearing a sign saying, I'm an atheist and I don't believe in your God? What would happen to me? Peace, peace and love? Or would they be violent with me? Would I make it through? Do you think I'd make it out alive? Are you even still there? What a fun group, right? Because it's just a just a blood. It's just blood. Just blood and hate and anger. Blood and hate and anger. And that's all it is. There ain't no love, peace, blessings be upon him. There's no mercy. Certainly no mercy. Muhammad has said his self personally beheaded between six and nine hundred people, unarmed, captive soldiers and their families from a from a different tribe. And he personally cut their right what kind of guy is this and you'll find some way to justify it if you're still there you know or you'll just go away and cover your hair cover your ears la 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 you don't hear about the ugliness and hate you know and you'll hear the things you say about me and you're like your god is not violent you'll you'll say to yourself my god is not violent i'm not violent because of my god and then you'll be getting airplane tickets to come over here and find me and kill me so you can show me that your god is not violent now, you think I'm being hyperbolous, and I don't know if that's a word or not. And if it is, you shouldn'tly certainly probably don't know it. No offense to you, because you, you know, it's a second language for you, so I'd be awesome if you knew what hyperbolous meant. But that means I'm just being a, blowing it out of proportion, right? But how many atheist authors killed by Muslims? Yeah, sure. There is a list of, I mean, I'm just going to pop it up briefly. We're not going to let it, let it go on our day here. But there's a list of not only Salman Rushdie, but other, just other people where atheists have authors, just authors or bloggers like me who do nothing but point out the, the falseness of Islam, the falseness of Muhammad. Some of them did nothing more than draw cartoons. Charlie Hebdo. Hmm? Huh? 
And what happened to them? What happened to them from your peaceful, loving followers? You still there? I, I'm, oh, wait, wait, wait. They may still be here. Let me check my thing. Prove the Quran is wrong and come and speak about it. You ignorant. Okay, again, you're going right for me. You're calling me names. I get it. Um, one of us is ignorant. But see, I really, I, I should not judge you for your English. That is bad because you you got two languages. You speak two languages. I don't. So your English is better than my Arabic. True. You're good. Uh, Jovan, time of flood towards the, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Thank you for pointing that out. Thank you, Jovan. Uh, Neil, let's see, or no, let's see. I have a genuine question for you. They're all genuine from you. You're all like, oh, it's a genuine question. Please answer. If a tiny little baby died at one and didn't get a chance to live, would they have the same ending as a mafia member? I don't understand what you mean. In God's eyes? I don't know. Why, I don't understand the question, why that would matter. Um, here's the thing. Why don't, if, if a baby dies and its soul automatically goes to heaven, then why aren't you for abortion? Because they, they actually die and they go to heaven before they get the chance to be born and live in sin and have get, go to hell. So why aren't you pro-abortion? I'm just kind of curious about that. Uh, yep, lots of you got yeah, yeah. I enjoy I enjoy your science. Yes, very, very, very. very. Catch up more, catch up more. James Scott. Hi, James. Uh, why do you feel compelled to share your atheist beliefs? Not agreeing or disagreeing with you. Okay, that's a good question. I, I just think you and many other uh Many religious people on here are just silly for more constructive. All right, hold on just let me get, come back to that. That's a good one, James. Here's why. Are you still there, James? I hope you're still in the chat, James Scott. If you're still, I'm going to roll down. I'm just kind of hoping I'm going to start. While you, uh, why do I feel compelled to share my atheist beliefs? Here's the deal. Right now in our country, we have a religion that is trying to oppress the people in our country and uh, uh, impose its f beliefs on others. And that's Christianity. The Christians are doing everything from banning books in schools. Why are they banning? Who is banning books in schools? Is it liberal groups? Is it atheist? Is it satanic? No, it's Christian groups that are banning books in school. Um, who is making it to where, or ba banning uh, uh, abortion or, or um um, e either abortion, marital aids, everything from abortion all the way to uh, prophylactics to keep you from being born. They're against it all just so they can oppress women. That's Christianity. They're right here trying to, to oppress us with that. And my deal, my point is it's a war of attrition. We have to take away their believers by convincing them that their God is a monster and that the things they have been taught are lies that were just filtered through believers like their priests or their pastor to make this horrific, horrific text come out of some good, loving, merciful thing, right? That's what it's all about because they are oppressing us. And that's why I do what I do because I have a wife and I have a daughter. I don't want my daughter to be a birth slave. I don't want her to be not, you know, just essentially worth nothing but having babies. And, you know, J.D. Vance and the conservatives, which is a Christian thing, right? They're all about women in their 40s or in menopause are pretty much useless after that. Their role in life should be just sitting at home and taking care of grandchildren. That's freaking ridiculous. It's insulting. And it's Christianity oppressing itself with our beliefs. So my job is to point out how stupid the text is and the things they believe are. So hopefully some of them will go, you know what? That's right. This is just ridiculous. This is, it's ridiculous. Look at it. It's ridiculous. So I don't, I'm not trying to go off on you. You asked a little legitimate question. I'm not even sure if you're still here, but if you are, there's your answer. I have a very good people. More people need to speak out. There's other people who are content creators in this channel. Please feel free to subscribe to their shows. Um, cause they too have good voices, uh, about what's going on. Let me come back over here and catch up with some of the chat. I am Cherokee, by the way. We are just savages, uncivilized demons, spawn of Satan, according to Christian. Yeah, that's right. They were even forbidden from speaking their own language. Navajo means like thieves with knives or something. And that was given to the Indians. They didn't name themselves that. Christian colonizers did. Spanish Christian colonizers. <laughs> do you believe your belief is correct no i don't believe my belief is correct that's the answer you should give me 
Uh, rape, according to the OT, is marriage. Yeah, I mean, that goes, that's, that's man, that's a lot of good stuff there. Thank you, Pragmatic Crystal, for joining us and for sharing my stuff, my craziness. If you guys are watching and you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Um, and we may be, I've been on the show, we may even be streaming over on um, the Skeptic Havens. We're going to work it up to where... The Daily Atheist Morning Show is going to start streaming not only on the Daily Atheist Morning Channel, but we're also going to restream live at the same time over on the Skeptic Haven channel. Or we're going to try to make that happen. That way we'll have more content, so spread our craziness all over the place. As many outlets as we can get it. So I really appreciate the Skeptic Haven people for joining me and letting me join them. I'm uh, helping with, uh, you know, doing technical nerd stuff and hosting shows over there on their thing. We're going to host a uh, matter of fact, um, Ahmad, one of these days, why are atheists being cowards? It's a, I mean, I don't get what you, executing was executed in a Christian nation. Yeah. I, I, I gotta say, I'm not a, the chat's getting big enough to where I'm hard having a hard time keeping up with it. So I'm going to let the guys de depend on that, and y'all can continue arguing with him. If something I need to see, you can you can tag me in it. Um, you said you wanted to see a miracle of the Quran, but you didn't see my man. right, brother. It's busy. I'm busy, dude. I'm running the show. I'm talking about it. what are your miracles in the Quran? There are no miracles. Go ahead and put it back in there. Come on, type it quick though. Type it quick. I got I ain't got all day. <laughs> what are your miracles, and how can you prove them? I mean, the notion that this happened, tell me, I mean, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot. I'll show you the message again. Yes, please do. Please do. I'll watch this time. I'm trying to watch as I wait for your stuff. Um, but if it's, if it's just blah, I'm not, I mean, we'll see what happens. Show me the message again. Copy paste, brother. Chop, chop, knees to chest, knees to chest. Uh, we developed the drop into a clinging clot, then developed the clot into a lump of flesh, then developed the lump into bones and cloth clothe the bones with flesh then we all right listen first of all let's start with something i'm gonna I, this is I, i've heard of this before it's been a long time i remember something vaguely about this let's start with something here okay if you know if you know the, and all you got to know is this that the semen that comes out of a man's penis goes into a woman and later it comes out a person that's all you got to know. Those two things. And you can create that story. Any, anybody could have created that story. Let me reread it again. We developed the drop into a clinging drop. So the drop is the initial issue from the man. Because it has to. So, gee, let's work this through together. If it comes out of my penis as a liquid, as a drop, how does it become a person? Well, it has to be a drop and then it develops into a clinging drop or whatever. What you got there at best, at best is them basically kind of figuring out that the stuff that came out of the dick is what came out of the vagina nine months later. And they made up their own little story as to why that happened. Just like the Tower of Babel. The, well, the reason for the story of the ba Tower of Babel is not because everybody on the planet spoke the same language at the time. No, they, they wrote that story to explain why there were so many different languages. They saw there were many different languages, assumed at one point there was only one, and wrote a story. Same thing with your little thing. This is pretty simple stuff, dude. This is simple. This is not zero proof. This is zero proof. And I wouldn't even be sure. I would really want to see the oldest, the oldest version of the Quran that you could find and see if that text is actually even there. Um, but, but you see what I mean? Even if it is there, if it is there, it's super easy to figure out that, hey, it was talking from us. Work with me here. Come on. So, Oh man, this chat doesn't scroll. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're probably talking to me and I'm not seeing it. The steps are correct. Clot, bones, flesh. Right. It does make sense. Doesn't it make sense? It makes sense from an issue from sperm. It's clot. Then, you know, I don't think bones come first though. Bones don't come first. There's a little pot of bones develop within, you know? Uh, but anyway, we can, we don't need to argue that. That's, that's a small fact, but really the whole point it's, it's not, there's nothing there, dude. It's so easy. To go from the issue that came out of the man, how did that become the issue that come out of a woman? Well, it starts as a drop, and then somehow bones have to come in, and somehow skin has to come in, and organs have to come in, and then it comes out the body. How hard is that to figure out? That's nothing. That's no scientific nothing. Of, nothing. That's ridiculous. There, I mean, that's ridiculous. Okay, 
That's great. That's great. Like I said, even if it was there, if it was in the original text, it doesn't matter. It's not proof of scientific nothing. It explains literally what I just told you. As soon as I read what you read, I knew what was going on. I went, oh, hey, well, what happens if, how do you get that from there to there? It doesn't take a super genius to figure out that, well, it starts off as a little clot of liquid and somehow comes out as a person. How hard is that? Come on, brother. You got to be able to do better than that. Got to be able to do better than that. Think about it yourself. If you were a person trying to explain how, where babies come from, essentially, and that's all you knew, that it comes out here and comes out there, it's kind of an easy kind of step to make, really. Um, yeah, it just depends on your view. You're splitting the hairs on what is a clot. You know, is it a clot? I don't know. It kind of clots up whenever you shoot it across the room. <laughs> did I say that? I did. I did. <laughs> um, well, you know, I've thought about having a call on here, but uh, adding a call line, uh, I have some friends who have a call line, and we might be able to someday get it hooked up to where, but you've pressed me again to call me, and you're not going to be able to convince me, especially based on what you're, you telling me isn't going to help. I mean, it's not going to make it any clearer. You you can see my answer. Does it not make sense to you? That, wow, that's kind of super easy. That's like too easy. It comes out liquid, a clot. It comes out flesh and bones. So you got to somehow go from a clot to flesh and bones. Is that hard? Why is that so hard for you? Why is that a miracle? Explain to me. I mean, now you're like, oh, I wish I could t call you so I could actually answer you. Well, that, that doesn't that doesn't help. I mean, you could explain it there, you know, I, I, but I do, I do kind of wish that all the chromosome numbers of a species in the cramp. I don't think that's right. I think you're making that up. You're either making that up or you're getting somebody, you know, I'm not saying you're being disingenuous. I don't want to go there. I think you believe things that other people told you and they were either wrong or they were being disingenuous. Um, and this again, chromosome number of species, how many chromosomes are there? How many are there? For which species? They're not the same. You, you, you know that, right? They're not all the same. So which species are you talking about? Are you talking about the chromosomes for... <laughs> I can't send links. Yeah, I don't, want, I don't want links of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. You, you do your magic, man. I get you. I get you. I'm not going to be... The whole deal is you could send me a link to uh, somebody who claims something that just because some dude on the internet claimed it does not mean it's real. Show me scientific links to studies done by real scientific organizations, independent, third party studies that back up your claims, you know, just because and just because 46 humans. Uh, no, that's not right. That's not right. I could be wrong. Let me be wrong. How many? We'll do this together. Let's do this together, my friend. Chromosomes. Do humans have? I might be wrong. It might be four. Oh, look at there. 46. There we go. 46. 48 for apes. Then I'm, I'm going to assume 25 chromosomes. Each person inherits one set of 23 from and another pair for 23. That's great. That is great. I'm going to assume that you are also correct. Right. So that's all in the Quran. I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. You can probably say something like you can jam just like they did in this other video about Christianity where they just jam everything about Christ in there going because they said light that Christ was light. You're going to take some random numbers that they have in there and try to claim that. I just don't buy it, man. Why would they hide it in there like that? Why wouldn't they just say? Why don't they just say openly, plainly? Hello. Hello. Hello future person reading this Quran book, this is how many chromosomes are they? Why didn't they say the word chromosomes? You know, why, why didn't they go through that? Zygote is formed by the fusion of a sperm. So yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. See, 23 chromosomes, 24 chromosomes, spinning. you get one too many though. And what happens now? Yeah. And what happens? And again, they're not the same for every creature. Thank you. I'm glad you noticed that. Uh, strawberries. I feel, it? I feel jelly. I'm all jelly about strawberries. Uh, strawberry jam. Strawberry jelly. So I'm just not really sure where you get that that's some kind of big thing. That God, I mean, why Why does that impress you as a scientific discovery? 
Look at the look at the technology. I presume you're on the other side of the world right now, watching me right now, live right now. That's technology. That's science, baby, coming at you. That same science tells me that what you say is not right. Hello, not let. I'm going to say it's not let. Hello, thank you for subscribing. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my thing. Low, yeah, all these things have, there's a lot of science behind this. We have real science that disproves all your fake science. You're, you're jammed in their science. A lot of the problem, though, really, is that even here, we don't address Islam very much. We don't talk about it. My channel, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they cut this channel off right now. Anytime they could just kill my stream because of Islamophobia because I'm unrealistically being scared of Islam. But wait, this is the same. This is the most violent religion on the entire planet. Right now, violent. Smoke rises up in Lebanon and, and Israel. And who started that fight? That would be Hebanon, uh, Hezbollah, which are Muslims. Uh, of course, you can't really sever who, who, who started it. Who started it? The Jews. Or the Muslims or the Jews. But you know, I will tell you something. I don't know who started it, but I will tell you, and you can get this from the Bible. The Bible tells you that God loves the smell of burning flesh. It says it several times. In the book of Genesis, it even says that they, at that point, apparently they didn't eat animals. They killed them and burned their flesh just for this God monster to smell the burning flesh. And look at the smoke lingering over the Middle East right now. Burning flesh. That's a God you want to worship? I used to be a person who was like, live and let live. You know, I was, I'd speak out against organized religion. But to the little person, a little part, to the average person over there who, who just believes and they're not hurting anybody, I would say I don't care about them. I don't want to bother them. They don't bother me. But nowadays I'm into deconverting. Yeah, now the reason why is because I want to take that person away from Christianity, for example. Let's make sure that, let's say they're a Christian. They're just a person walking down the street, just they believe in Christ, but they're not, you know. I want to take them away because they vote for Christian things that hurt other people. They may not think about it. They're sweet. They're loving with, oh, they're going to vote for what's his name because he's for abortion. He doesn't want to, he wants to stop abortion because Jesus says abortion is bad. So they're going to vote for that person who's going to oppress and hurt other people based on that religion. So, yeah, we should get those people away. I used to be a live and let live. Now I'm like, let's deconvert as many people as we can. Just like there's preachers out there and pastors out there whose job it is to convert Christ, to, to convert non-Christians into Christians. It's my job now to deconvert believers and non-believers. So you can see how ridiculous this faith is. All of it. It's all one big ugly faith. You know, you know how it is. Um, let me go here. Chapter 99, all the chromes. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Ahmed calling to Skeptic Haven. That's a great idea, Ahmed. Uh, Skeptic Haven does have a let's talk. Sh they have a talk show for people to call in. So, um, uh, Wes, if you could, I don't, I don't think you have it. Let me see if I can give Wes a, can I do it here? I don't know. Let me go here to Wes and see if I can give you a wrench, Wes. Wes needs a wrench. Oh, computer, bad computer. Computer, remember that computer I was like lambasting you a minute ago? I was like, computer technology, good. It won't let me give you a wrench, Wes. It's just being a jerk. So I'll give you a wrench later. But but uh, yeah, links, if you don't mind, somebody could put a links to the, uh, the call-in show. And we could definitely encourage uh, Ahmad to go and watch the show and call in and visit. Now, I'm not on that show. I might be. Uh, I think uh, if they have a host that can't make it, I think... Uh, I might be able to step in for one of the hosts. You know, I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be against that. But let me go back over to here. There we go. Just catch back up on our chat. Yeah, yeah. That's something else too. We're kind of hitting each other. I noticed the one guy who was all loud and calling me names. Oh, there we go. The way you talk. Well, okay. This is a link to the slide. All right, there you go. The way you man. Okay. It's amazing how you look old, but yet you have the brain of a little child. <laughs> this is from our friend Bacham. Bacham, I realize you're probably not a person who's educated in the ways of the world and things like philosophy and stuff. But a man a long time ago named Socrates, he said that whenever you attack someone else, you've already lost. You attack me and you call me names because you can't attack my argument. You can't defend your God 
against what I have to say. You get offended by, by, by what I say, and yet your God can't stop me from doing it. No power there. No power there. At best, one of his followers could see me and do what? Come on, what would they do? But, again, back to our Socrates said that, you know, when the debate is lost, so you can't argue against anything I've said, you can't, you have nothing against, to, against my argument, you can't defend your Bible against me, you can't defend Muhammad, you can't defend Islam, you can't defend Allah, so the first thing you do is go after me and call me names, that you don't like my voice, that you don't like my face. I think the problem is, you don't like the words that are coming out of my mouth, but you can't defeat them. You're powerless to defeat them. And so you lash out at me. That's okay. It's great for the great for the metrics of the channel. Keep doing it. Keep on. Um, let me go here. I'm gonna I'm gonna again, guys. I'm gonna I appreciate you. Those of you who've stayed with me for this long. We really enjoy these longer. I mean, it's fun. I get to and the people coming in. Ahmad, I disagree with what you say, but I enjoy talking to you about it. It has been a lot of fun. Um, and I'm it's good. I appreciate that you at least believe what you believe and you keep firm to it. That's cool, you know. Um, as I mentioned, my new goal, I would love to see, I would love to pry you away from that belief. Come to the dark side, man. Come over here and believe. And look how vicious and mean your God is. And look how nice we over are over here on the left. We don't go around killing people. It's not our bag. Look, remember, the Middle East, God loves the smell of burning flesh. And there it is, burning flesh all over Israel. Oh, Israel, the home of God. Mecca. It's just, mm. Okay, guys, yes, don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to play you guys a little something. I'm going to go get me some coffee. I will be back in just a second. I'm call, let me go here and figure out if we, which one we got here. You know, yeah, let's play some Wild Bill Wigglestick for you in case you don't know who Wild Bill Wigglestick is. Hello, and welcome to Shakespeare with a Redneck. What the? I am Wild Bill Wigglestick, and I'll be your handsome host, your gilded guide, your cowboy concierge of Shakespeare. Dude, really? Today on Shakespeare with a Redneck, I'm going to perform the prologue from Romeo and Juliet. Damn it, Bill. <laughs> <sighs> Two households, both alike in dignity in fair Verona where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventured piteous overthrows doth with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death mark love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end not could remove, is now the two hours traffic of our stage, the which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. Hey, that wasn't half bad. I'm not as dumb as I look. Of course not. You'd be in a coma. Okay, so here's a quick rundown of the situation. Bill, two snot-nosed brats ignore the warnings of their learned parents and end up getting four people killed. Bill, come on, man. You're always blah, blah, atheist stuff, blah, blah, boring. Say something fun, for goodness sake. What? Particle is a fun word. Bill, particle, particle, particle. Bill, or talk about horses and dogs. People love horses and dogs. Or boobies. Everybody loves boobies. Bill. Oh, can I say boobies on YouTube? If you close your eyes, it doesn't count. Talk about boobies then. Okay, everybody loves those cute little blue-footed bastards. It hurts right here. Culture, baby, coming at you. Avoid bringing a plague on both your houses. A plague on both your houses! By hitting that subscribe button, then that little notification button. And bang that thumbs up button like frisky cousins at a family reunion. Thank you and take care. Peace. <laughs> I hope you enjoy uh, Wild Bill Wigglestick. Uh, I, I, I do Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Wigglestick. That's awesome, huh? That's awesome. When you put it, you get it. When you get Wild Bill Wigglestick, William Shakespeare. Shakespeare Wigglestick. I'm just a genius. I can't help myself. I, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. I enjoy that clip myself. I, I don't know. You know, I, I played the long one on here, you know. Um, 
Thank you, Sean Alexander. It's nice to see you, cuddly, cuddly unicorn. Nice to have you. Religion ain't true. I appreciate your uh, concise assertion, and I share that assertion. Yes. You know what? I tell you what. As you can see, Ahmad, I appreciate you, brother. But as you can tell, I'm kind of running a show. I got like 15 to 17 people watching. I'm doing stuff. I'll make a note of. Let me let me look here. You, I can't see your link. Uh, let me check back. I can actually check this card, and I will go observe something. Chromosomes. But I just I just don't. I I think if they were that obvious, we'd all know them. You know, I've I've all. But but I'll check it out. Everyone's Google results are different. That's that's actually true. That's true. Auntie jer has got a point on that. That's a good point. That it may not show the same thing. I do understand what you're saying. Um, yeah, I, I still don't know how you think that that's going to prove anything, though. I mean, we, you and I both know it doesn't say that there's X amount of chromosomes in there. It, it uses like there were 46 lambs in a thing, and Muhammad personally beheaded. 24 of them and 16 of them managed to somehow survive and you're going to cram all that into saying that's some kind of chromosome right right critiques and limitations however not all scholars agree with the notion that the quran accurately describes embryology some critics argue that quranic descriptions are too vague and metaphorical exactly what i said it's like how does this become this well man i tell you what this is just a basic story somebody would come up for, to explain their for their kid uh, what argument when you make no sense man and yet you didn't bring any evidence for what you said it's your book and again, I, what I said was that you attacked me. You attacked me without, without making any arguments against what I've said about your, 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 your prophet. You know, there's no evidence that he split the moon in half. There's no, no evidence that he did any of those miracles. And then they take these things and they try to claim he did these things or the claim that they mention them in the book. Yeah, it's just no power there, brother. And But, you know, if it weren't my channel, I could just go off on you, calling you all kinds of names, just like you did me, talking about the lack of intelligence. Actually, I think you got to be kind of smart. You speak at least more than one language, I guess, right? I don't, I mean, I kind of speak other languages, French and Spanish, but nothing, I mean, you, your English is better than my Arabic, you know? So go look this stuff up yourself, uh, rather than just, you could watch the video in the, the description. That's a good point, brother. Check this out. In the description of this video that you're watching, there's a playlist, and it's called the Christianity's Shame. Really, it, it's kind of the Abrahamic religions. All of you, you should all be ashamed. But go watch the video, and it explains chapter by chapter for the first 12, I got 12 episodes up right now, of Genesis, why it's an evil God monster. Go check it out. You know, and then you can argue with me and call me names. Okay. Leave comments. I dig it. I dig it. Um, did see of the signs of his Lord, the greatest that prophet had seen the green carpet spread all the horizons of the sky. Yeah. So Muhammad invented grass. I'm being intentionally jerky there. Um, Northern lights. How did he know? <laughs> A green carpet spread over the horizon of the sky. So a green light, possibly, shined in the sky. And that was the northern lights, guaranteed. Couldn't have been anything else. Couldn't have been a solar flare or the result of anything else. Had to be the northern lights. Had to be the northern lights. I really like the idea of a solar flare. Do you know what a solar flare is? Uh, coronal mass ejection having nothing to do with penises. Uh, have you heard of coronal mass ejection and what happens? Did you hear about the time back in the 1800s? There was, matter of fact, it happened here in the United States, here, right here, that the solar, the sun um, had solar um, winds that were so high that we saw the um, um, northern lights all the way down here in uh, Texas, New Mexico, well below the line of the Middle East. So it's no, there, there are lots of different reasons why he may have seen that. Okay? No miracle, brother. No miracle. Not a miracle. All it means is he saw lights in the sky. That's it. If, it, if, the, if that's even what that means. But just know that. Know that what I said. Okay? Go look. Go look in science. Right now, this year, they had solar winds 
that made the northern lights come all the way down very far, far enough to be seen. So go look that up. And once you see that, does that make you question your God? Hmm? All things new. John 3.36, he who believes in the Son of everlasting life and he who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. What kind of God? A nice God, a merciful God, a loving God, or a vengeful, hateful, angry God, an evil God monster? Which kind of God are you talking about? A God that's going to forgive them and let them live in peace and harmony? Or a God that's going to burn them in fire forever? I'd like to know all things new. Let me know your thoughts on that. I'll wait. <laughs> Coronal mass ejection. Sounds naughty. Um, ba -dum -ba -dum -bum. Well, the, to answer your question, Ahmad, the reason why Crystal does that is because she's a kind of like a supporter of the show. She actually is part of the show uh, in that she's a mod for the show. So it's kind of like they do that. They have that. It's a thing. She's not your mod. She doesn't post everybody's links. She just posts my links for my show and the links for Skeptic Haven. I hope if she's doing it, I'm kind of having a hard time. So, you know, don't go after Crystal. Yeah, yeah, that's not the fight you want to have. <laughs> um, horses never flew, Ahmad. Yeah, I mean, when you stop and think, brother, stop and think. Did did uh, did did Muhammad really ride on a horse? Fly, fly on a horse? Did he really? Does that is that you know? Does that make sense? And why would he hate you? And uh, you got to go. Well, you're right. I appreciate you for watching. You say we ain't getting nowhere. I believe that. Yeah, we're not. I understand. Uh, I, I don't have a phone call set up. I don't have a phone number set up on my thing, okay? I'm not going to give you my personal phone number. That'd just be stupid. Um, no offense. Um, you know what I mean? So if I get a chance, now they made the offer. They did say that you could talk to somebody. Now I might, I might be willing to be on their show. They haven't asked me. They never asked me to be on their shows. To hell with Chris. But uh, yeah, the Skeptic Haven has a live show where they talk to people like you. So, I mean, I would, this last Sunday, I was actually the guy screening the call. So had you called, you would have spoken to me. So the, when the words coming out of our mouths are for your benefit. So when my friend over says, go, you know, Skeptic Haven Sunday, be there or be square. Uh. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to be screening the calls and the host. I can do it. I ain't scared. I'm talented. I always find it funny when theists throw Bible verses. <laughs> I know, right? I know. John 3.16, for he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son an atheist. That means he loves you. He forgives you. He wants to welcome. No, that's not what it means, dude. Read the next scripture. It says, so that those who believe in him, only those who believe in him shall be saved. Not everybody, not the whole world. Don't bring your half scriptures up here and expect us. <laughs> oh, Jesus loved me. If Jesus loved me, he would instantly forgive me and not burn me in fire and wouldn't make me beg for it. But I'm sorry, Daisy. Baby Daisy gets excited. Again, if you haven't bought the puppies a pup cup. <laughs> Daisy is like, what's wrong, Papa? What's wrong? This is Daisy. She is <laughs> obviously probably hated by all the Muslim followers. They don't hate her, though. They don't hate you. No, they don't. Look how she's getting the gray hairs up on her there. Oh, my goodness. She's such a good puppy. She's a jerk. Chomper. She, we call her Chomper. Like, you give her a cookie or something, you got to, ow, Chomper. No chomping. Um, all things, they are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of their heart. Isn't that, isn't that what it would say, though, right? That's that's why. I've got a hard heart. And it's, but, but wait, man, what if it's really just because it's nonsense? And you've gotten that nonsense filtered to you through a priest or through somebody, your parents or whoever believed it, and you don't have the ability to step outside and go, yeah, this is kind of nonsense. I mean, I'm talking to you, all things new. Really, does, it, does that sound, I mean, that's kind of, doesn't that sound weird? Read it yourself, how, how that sounds. Uh, let's see here. Daisy, Daisy, Duke, Daisy, Dukes. Yes, she's our, she was our third puppy. She's a rescue. She was a rescue. <clears throat> and if, again, if you're not, uh, I have five dogs, not one or two or three or four, but five dogs and they They work very hard for the show. Please feel free to buy them a pup cup. I always point in the wrong direction. There's a pup cup thing over there. Um, but, but, but beyond that, I'm for rescuing dogs. 
these dogs are fed vegetables and chicken twice a day by a beautiful woman. I mean, they are well taken care of dogs. But if they didn't live with us, they, they wouldn't be. Most of them were rescued kind of off the street from homeless shelters and stuff like that. One of them we bought, I talk, mentioned it earlier. Uh, but the, our most recent acquisition, uh, Ollie, our new engineer, he's sitting out in the sun with Jack. Um, he, he was uh, the, the puppy dog of a veteran who needed medical attention, and he had to go into a medical facility, and he couldn't take the puppy with him. And he refused to go because he couldn't take the puppy with him. So, you know, we, we took the puppy. So adopt you a dog, okay? Um, but Daisy was getting, she gets she gets worked up for Papa. Let me carry on here. doesn't sound very Christian. Yeah, I mean, Christians love to quote mine. I know. And that's why I was watching this video earlier, and they were, I, this Christian analyzed one of my videos, and it's like, you have to work really hard to make this book seem like it's evil. I'm like, no, man. Making it seem evil is pretty easy. You have to work really hard to make it look like a book of love and mercy. They, they'll, oh, mercy, blessings be upon him. Blessings be upon him. Why are you blessing God? Prayer, uh, why, why would you do that? Why does God need your blessing? You know? I mean, it's kind of, a lot of that doesn't make sense. I feel you. Thank you, Ahmad. I know you got to go, man. Thank you so much for your time. I know we disagree. Be safe. Stay safe. I hope you, you know, whatever, however you feel, man. Be good. Come back and see us tomorrow on the show or especially next Sunday. Catch the Skeptic Haven and uh, we'll, we'll see. Maybe we might work something up where I'll be on the call that next week. Um, yeah, again, Ahmad, Skeptic Haven is talking to you in the chat. So subscribe to their channel. They have a talk show where, where they have a phone number and, and, you know, we'll get there. Okay. If you want to do the talk and you want to tell somebody, you want to show somebody, that's good. We'll we'll make it happen somehow, okay? Let me see here. Um, All Things New responds with, meaning you know the Bible, but sometimes happened to you. Something happened to you, I'm guessing. And the sadness deep in you hate God because of it. I understand your pain. Okay, here's the thing. Nothing bad happened to me. Ain't nothing bad happened to me. <laughs> God ain't done nothing to me. He doesn't help me. He doesn't hurt me. If God hurted me, I'm, I'm a non-believer. And yet I live in a pretty decent house. And I got a, a couple decent cars. You know, I mean, I live a pretty decent life. I, I do okay. I say that. <laughs> I don't do any of it. The wife does it all. She she pays. Me. But you know what I mean? I mean, if God was smiting me, why? I know. But I, I mean, I, I live a good life like a good person without God. Um, and God didn't hurt me at all. God hurts other people. People like you. Now, I'm reading your comment, man. All things new, and I'm just not sure at this point if English is your first language. Okay? So I'm going to kind of, I'm not trying to be insulting. I'm trying to go on the assumption that English is not your first language and you're doing great. Okay? So you say that God, I'm sad and deep in my heart. Yeah, because I clearly seem like a sad person. <laughs> um, but I'm a sad person in my heart because of, the hate for God, but look what the followers of God do. And uh, I'm going to speak intentionally slow so we can understand each other just in case English is your second language. Look at what the followers of God and Jesus do. Christians in the United States are all about hurting and oppressing women, uh, minorities now, the MAGA right and the Christian conservatives are getting together and they're all about pushing their oppressive agenda on us and then when you go over to the middle east and you look at what's going on over there look at all the smoke rising in the sky from the people from the from the from the war and who are the people on the sides of that war islam judaism muslim jew right uh let's see here ha, ha, ha. they always claim i hate that. that remember that was like our bingo we should do the bingo oh, we're gonna have to do that i'm gonna steal that idea was it was it neil's show somebody does bingo um yeah we should do that whatever they claim that i hate god i don't hate god any more than i hate santa claus i don't believe in santa claus if santa claus's followers were going around in the name of santa claus and hurting and killing other people i would be speaking out against the teachings of santa claus but they don't. Well, they do, but not in the name of Santa Claus. They do it in the name of Jesus and Muhammad and Abraham. Uh -huh. Let me just catch up with the chat. Permagnet Crystal, I understand and respect your opinion. I'm only here to show your POV. Could be, you know, that's cool. I appreciate that. I, you know, I've been also 
I've been in a place, Ahmed, where the conversation, you got to go, you got to go, but you're still talking. I totally get it. I appreciate you. You're hooked. We're all hooked. Thank you for joining us. I hope you, you're not late wherever you got to go. Um, let's see here. Sean Alexander says, they always resort to the you hate God. That's right. Yep. Pavel, Pavel D says, all things yike, we don't have a God. Yeah, that's kind of true. It's, uh, yeah, see, why would I hate your God anymore and I hate anybody else as well? Only because of the actions of his followers. Cuddly, cuddly, cuddly. We don't need gods. We don't. It's a combination of public schooling, spell check. I understand. Okay, okay, I got you. Muslims have a false god. I get you. So so, so if English is your first language. I get it. I get it. I can see now. Understood. But at least speaking slower probably helped. <laughs> Couldn't have hurt. Um, we'll talk about that, Wes. We'll talk. We'll see. We'll see. I, I don't know who my options are. Uh, I'll probably Neil though. Neil, if possible. I don't know. Uh, I got a question. Somebody asked me a question. SS1964 says, I'm a 60 year old Native American, strong atheist, secular humanist, and a very happy person that has been married, never divorced, to my great high school sweetheart for 39 years. No God needed. See, that's the whole thing. These people think we can't live good, moral, just lives without their imaginary creature looking over our shoulder and counting how many times we masturbate. You know, let me ask you, do any, have any of you, any of you, and I'm sure you have now, I, hopefully Ahmad is off to work or where he's got to go, but especially Muslims, if you're there, anybody still watching, do you, when you touch yourself, do you ever worry that God is watching? Allah is going to condemn you for that. Do you pray later and go, God, I touched my pee pee early, earlier, and I need you to forgive me. Does that happen? Or is that just me? <laughs> Am I the only one that did that? When I was young, I remember, especially when I was 13 or 14, I was like, I, <laughs> But I want to touch it. <laughs> and I'd be like, all right, I'm going to do it. Is, is God watching? Well, God, if you're watching, just don't know, don't, don't watch in what's in my head. <laughs> you know, Pascal's wager. Yeah, yeah, atheist, please. Hey, all things new, please read Pascal's wager. Please, please do it. Just do it from the atheistic pr perspective. Here's the deal. If there is no God and you lived your life by a Christian way, well, then you restrict yourself to things and you've wasted your entire life doing things that are wrong. You've hurt other people. You've lashed out other people. You've uh, went against gays or you did all these things for that God or you wasted all that time or you donated all that money to a church that could have gone to science or helping dogs or something like that. All that. And then you die and there is no God. There's nothing. And you've wasted your whole freaking life for nothing. Pascal's wager. Or there is a God. Okay, there is a God. And you didn't believe in that God. And you go through the whole thing, but now one of us has proof. I have proof that this life is real. And you do not have proof that the afterlife is real. So we have proof that this life, so our Pascal's wager that really you should live this life as an atheist, not believe in that God monster. Don't let it rule you. Don't let it make you give money to people who are going to hurt children, right? Don't fall for that shit. Be an atheist because we don't believe in that stuff. We go and live good lives without hurting people, without owing an allegiance to some God. Go read its book. It tells you all kinds of hateful things to do. And they say, oh no, Jesus is the new covenant. And then they start talking about the Old Testament and the Ten Commandments. And they throw in the Ten Commandments at our kids in schools and trying to impose rules on our women based on what happened to Eve in the Bible. You know? Uh, whose morals, yours or Hitler's? Your morals are subjective. But look at, yeah, okay, I can dig that. My morals are better than your God's morals. I know rape is bad. Your God does not. I know taking children, female children as sex slave is bad. Your God does not, right? I realize that killing an animal just to smell its burning flesh and for no other reason is bad. But your God doesn't. I am more moral than your God. Hmm. How does that feel? You do know these things, right? You have read the Bible. You know what this monster God does, right? You, you, you've read the books. Hmm. And who, yeah, Hitler's morals were actually closer to God's. Hmm. 
Hitler tried to do what to all of the Jews? Hitler tried to create his own global flood, metaphorically speaking, and remove the world of the Jews, didn't he? So who's closer to God? Sounds like you worship a God monster, doesn't it? I kind of, do you regret bringing up your Pascal's wager? Now, see, here's the deal. You talk about your God. Now, what if I am wrong? If I am wrong, then I live my life as a good person. I don't hate other people because of their religion or because of their sex or because of some ancient book. I live a nice, good, peaceful life. And when I die, I burn in hell forever because of your peaceful God. Doesn't that sound bad? Doesn't that make your God sound that much worse? Only because I didn't suck him off, because I didn't kiss his ass and believe he was real, and whoa, holy, holy is the Lord, only because of that. Not because I harmed somebody else, not because I stole something, but because of words that came out of my mouth. I'm going to burn in a pit of fire forever. Isn't that weird? You believe that? You worship that God? Oh, Jesus is the New Testament. He's the New Covenant. Really? Yeah. They come, they go. Still subjective if there is no God. No, but subjective. Yeah, it's subjective. But we can tell what's good or bad, can you not? So some people, some of you, you people claim that you get your morals from God. Okay? You get your morals from the Bible. Where in the Bible does it tell you to... to to not rub, I, I don't know, there's so many different things that are good and bad. Where does the Bible tell you those things? First of all, let's start with a list of things the Bible does tell you are good and evil. Tell me in the chat, what's good and evil? Can you put it on your hand, count it on your hand, how many things are good and evil? Is cheating on your taxes good and evil? Good or evil? Hmm. What about, what about again, taking sex slaves, female sex slaves? Is that good or evil? According to the Bible, that's good. So is that good by you? It sounds like, I mean, we're, we should actually be lucky that you guys don't follow your book more closely to the text. We're so lucky. We're so grateful you don't. Because otherwise, you know, you would be killing your old children whenever they spoke out against you. Because it says so in the Bible. You have read the Bible, haven't you? Are you still there? Assumes that those chances are the same. See, all right, so Skeptic Haven, thank you for pointing out that. That's what I mentioned. That's why I pointed out. So Skeptic Haven says Pascal's wager assumes that those chances are the same. That the chances that the odds that there is an afterlife or that there's not an afterlife. But as we talked about, I have proof there's a life and you're living it right now. You have no proof, no guarantee that the afterlife that you believe in is real, for one. And then there's so many different versions, so many different gods, so many different versions of each god, so many different sects. How do you know yours is the right one? We know based on the text that it's a vicious, unloving god. If you do the wrong thing, it's not going to forgive you and you're going to burn in hell forever. So even if you're right, the chances... And there is a God that you should not believe in it. You should live a good life without it, without hurting other people. Be yourself and then burn in hell with the rest of us because you're going to anyway. The chances that you, my friend, you, that singular person on the other side of this screen who is typing to me, you have found the right sect of Christianity or Islam, the right exact one that's right. And you are going to go to heaven. Really? And you're not a narcissist? I should, I'm getting good at this. Ten Commandments, Ten Fingers. Ten Commandments are kind of a joke, though, aren't they? The first three are really just about kissing God's ass. They could have done something there. They could have said, like, yeah, which Ten Commandments? I didn't want to get on with that. But, yeah, I mean, the first commandment could have been, like, hey, man, go boil your water. If you boil, How many people would have, lives would have been saved had they boiled their water? Had they known, just simply known to boil their water? But no, the first one is thou shalt not worship no God before me. Really? That's important? That's what's important? No. No, there are lots of other things. Um, yeah, of the six. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know, and you, um, 
all things new may not know this, but it doesn't stop at Ten Commandments. What happened was the people came up to the mountain. And I'm sorry that you have to learn this from an atheist. But the people came up to a mountain, the mountain. And God's voice spoke. And he gave them the Ten Commandments. Commandment one, two, two, two. And it gets down to ten. And then the text says, the people became afraid and they backed away from the mountain. And then God continued. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I mean, there's over 600, 618 commandments. But you like the first ten. And again... Pascal's wager, yeah, that, somebody's still bringing up Pascal's wager. Oh, thank you for posting the link tree, Pragmatic Crystal. That's wonderful. Thank you for that. <laughs> right, why do we think? That's right. And God's everywhere. Why does he need us to do that? Why? I mean, he's really a pathetic kind of baby, right? Oh, mommy, mommy, pick me up, pick me up, pick me up, pick me up, mommy, pick me up. I'm like, God, just go away, man. I ain't got all day. I, fine, God, let me sit down here and go, okay, play with the baby, baby God. Go away now, baby God. It's like he constantly needs attention like a little bitty child. Am I right? How many times, Muslims, Muslim friends, Islamic friends, how many times a day are you supposed to pray? What happens to God? Does he like lose power if you don't pray enough every day? Is it like a, you know, like a, a superhero that gets all of his energy? Like Superman gets all his energy from the sun. If you don't pray, you right. I mean, does something bad happen to you if you don't pray? If you if you pray four times instead of five times a day, do you go to hell? Because that's what I was talking about earlier. And what your God is very not forgiving. And then so, five or six years ago, you only prayed four times a day and not five times a day. Damn it. And God is sitting up and he's got his, uh-oh, hell for that man. Yep, going to hell. He's going to hell. Nothing he can do is going to save him. Going to hell, going to hell, going to hell, going to hell, going to hell. And yet you're going to live the rest of your life kissing its ass, hurting other people, oppressing other people. Because you don't know, right? You really don't know. Did you misstep somewhere in the past? And it, Right? I mean, it's a narrow path. The narrow path to heaven. The path to heaven is narrow. And if you step off that path, you die spiritually speaking, right? There's no coming back on the path. You fell off the path, <laughs> you know? It's Let me catch up here on the chat. Damn, we really need... I know, right? The bingo. We should start that. Um, and I even got a link. Somebody hooked me up. Yeah, Sean Alexander says, I'll take the seven fundamental tenets of the Satanic Temple over the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments are just cruel for what they left out. Let's see. Creation of the universe sounds like, look at the trees. You can't look at something and assume a watchmaker, for example, bags the loaded. Yeah, begs the question. Yeah, that's right. I, don't you get it? They're always like, how could man come from, like, how could life come from inorganic matter like dirt? How could just life come from dirt? It's just impossible. It's crazy. And then how does it evolve into a man? And then all these things. And how does all that happen? And then they'll say, God created man from what? Dirt. They'll say, explain how the universe started, Mr. Big Bang Theory person. What came before the universe? And I say, I don't know. <laughs> what came before your God? Oh, nothing came before God. Well, nothing came before my universe. Oh, you can't say that. You can't say, oh, no, you can't. Well, yeah, I can. <laughs> I can. It works two ways, brother man. It's called special pleading, you know? You should learn that before you come into a little debate. <clears throat> See, notice how I went <clears throat> and coughed instead of went <clears throat> <clears throat> because I'm a pothead and I smoke it out of a pipe. And the vapors, <clears throat> that vape juice, they get the... <clears throat> I'm just saying, I know stuff. I drink coffee and I know shit. Yeah, that's funny. You know, if you read the text, if you read the New Testament, Jesus actually says, I'll come back within your lifetime. He tells the people who were present with him in that day that he would re he would return and bring the kingdom of heaven, not just return, right? Because he did return. He had a bad weekend. He got crucified, had a bad weekend, came back. He, he gave up his weekend for our sins. He didn't give up his weekend for our sins. He gave up his weekend to absolve the Old Testament God of its sins. Remember that. The amazing Super Chris figured that out right here on this show today. <laughs> Coffee is life. I know. I know. Let's see. One gives us another answer. I think we lost some of them. I think we lost. Uh, yeah. Did we? Oh, all things do. 
We all sin, but Jesus Christ, it's almost, it's so much better when I do the voice. Let me do the voice. We all sin, but Jesus Christ died on the cross. So God doesn't see our sins. <laughs> That's the forgiveness of God that we might have everlasting, uh, everlasting life. But to those who are denying my words, smell like death. That's cool. So this is my point. In the old days, what used to happen is they would take a goat or chicken and they would cast their sins upon this goat or chicken. And then they would sacrifice it. Either by killing it, burning it in fire, turning it loose out in the desert to die on its own. And that way they absolved their sins and they put them on this creature. Now what they would have you believe is that Jesus Christ was sacrificed for that same reason. We put our sins on Jesus Christ, right? And if we put our sins on Jesus Christ and he was sacrificed for our sins, then our sins have been absolved. And that essentially means we can do anything, anything, and get away with it. There's no, there's no punishment afterwards. There's nothing keeping these people from being hurting people, obviously, right? right? Talk about like the Catholic Church and little kids. You know, there's nothing keeping these people from hurting people. So that's the kind of logic we're employing here. Um, why did he wait 2,000 years with God? <laughs> um, vape and more coffee. Coffee is good. Let me catch up on the chat. I think I screwed up the chat. I was on a rant and I forgot where I was going. Um, but -um -bum -bum -bum. Most homosexualities are pedophile. Where do you get that? Are that the God? Well, are, are all things new? Let me ask you something. You're a Christian, right? I'm guessing from the chat. Which what is the biggest organization known for rampant pedophilia? That would be the Catholic Church, which is a Christian organization. You should also look up the Southern Baptist Church child essay scandal and also the Christian organization known as the Boy Scouts that have gone bankrupt despite all the billions of dollars that people have donated it through the years because of the legislation and the lawsuits from all the child essay they've been done. So before you start casting around the pedo word, you really should start looking at your own team. Really. It's, it's, it's embarrassing that you would even say that, that homosexual. I mean, it's embarrassing. You shame yourself, friend. You say, Matt, um, most homosexuals are, that's the God you worship. The God of this world, Satan, satanic beliefs, do what thou will. Yeah, I guess maybe if, you, uh, if you're going to put it that. Yeah, sure. Let's see what it's just taking time for people to mourn. <laughs> uh, God, sacri God sacrificed himself to save himself from himself, from the things that he would do to him. If we, yep, sure enough. The son shall not bear the inequity of the father, neither shall the father bear the inequity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon them. And yet, despite that biblical quote, the sons and children, descendants of the father, did bear the sins whenever it comes to Adam and Eve and the fall of man. And of course, Canaan. And Noah cursing Ham's son, innocent son, Canaan, for something Ham did. And all of Ham's descendants. I'm on a bit of a rant today, aren't I, Stephen? Um, ba -dum -bum -bum. <laughs> now he's just spewing hate speech. Let's see. Uh, ba -dum -bum -bum -bum. That's very possible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just going for attention now, I think. It may just be a bot. It's hard to tell. Sometimes they got the bots that come in. But hey, if they stir up the chat and they do the thing, that's fine. Um, I'm going to once again reach out to everybody. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel so we can help build my channel. I'm also trying to stream over on Step Skeptic Haven. We're going to join up with them and start streaming over there. So subscribe to Skeptic Haven as well. Um, me and my studio team appreciate all your support. Please don't forget to hook us up with a pup cup for the puppies over there at the pup cup thing down there. Just scan it with a little phone. Throw some money at the dogs. I say the dogs, right? <laughs> it worked once we're gonna try it um but thank you for your time everybody thank you all all the atheists who've shown out all the different and we're hopefully streaming on two facebook channel or youtube channels 
and Twitch, and then of course to Facebook for all the people who are watching um, on the Facebook groups. So thank you all so much. Um, again, there's a link. Uh, Pragmatic Crystal put one in for the Skeptic Haven. Go over there. They have some great talk shows and call-in shows. So if you want to call in and you want to let us know what you think, that'd be a great place to do it. Okay, I'm off to save the world. You have a wonderful day. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you, everybody. And don't forget to subscribe, like, share the thing, do the thing at the place. Take care. Have a wonderful day.